Book six of Paradise Lost, second edition by John Milton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Book six, the argument. Raphael continues to relate how Michael and Gabriel were sent forth to battle against Satan and his angels. The first fight described. Satan and his powers retire under night. He calls a council, invents devilish engines which in the second day's fight put Michael and his angels to some disorder. But they at length, pulling up mountains, overwhelmed both the force and machines of Satan. Yet the tumult not so ending, God on the third day sends Messiah, his son, for whom he had reserved the glory of that victory. He, in the power of his father coming to the place, and causing all his legions to stand still on either side, with his chariot and thunder driving into the midst of his enemies, pursues them, unable to resist, towards the wall of heaven, which opening, they leap down with horror and confusion into the place of punishment prepared for them in the deep. Messiah returns with triumph to his father. All night the dreadless angel, unpursued, through heaven's wide champagne held his way, till morn, waked by the circling hours, with rosy hand unbarred the gates of light. There is a cave within the mount of God, fast by his throne, where light and darkness in perpetual round lodge and dislodge by turns, which makes through heaven grateful vicissitude, like day and night. Light issues forth, and at the other door, obsequious darkness enters, till her hour to veil the heaven, though darkness there might well seem twilight here. And now went forth the morn, such as in highest heaven, arrayed in gold imperial from before her vanished night shot through with orient beams when all the plain covered with thick embattled squadrons bright chariots and flaming arms and fiery steeds reflecting blaze on blaze first met his view war he perceived war in precinct and found already known what he for news had thought to have reported Gladly then he mixed among those friendly powers, who him received with joy and acclamations loud, that one, that of so many myriads fallen, yet one returned not lost. On to the sacred hill they led him, high applauded, and present before the seat supreme, from whence a voice, amidst a golden cloud, thus mild was heard. Servant of God, well done! Well hast thou fought the better fight, Who single hast maintained against revolted multitudes The cause of truth, in word mightier than they in arms, And for the testimony of truth hast borne universal reproach, Far worse to bear than violence, For this was all thy care, To stand approved in sight of God, Though worlds judge thee perverse. The easier conquest now remains thee, aided by this host of friends, back on thy foes more glorious to return than scorned thou didst depart, and to subdue by force who reason for their law refuse, right reason for their law, and for their king, Messiah, who by right of merit reigns. Go, Michael, of celestial armies, prince, and thou in military prowess next, Gabriel, lead forth to battle these my sons invincible, lead forth my armed saints by thousands and by millions ranged for fight, equal in number to that godless crew rebellious, them with fire and hostile arms fearless assault, and to the brow of heaven pursuing, drive them out from God and bliss into their place of punishment, the gulf of Tartarus, which ready opens wide his fiery chaos to receive their fall. So spake the sovereign voice, and clouds began to darken all the hill, and smoke to roll in dusky wreaths, reluctant flames, the sign of wrath awaked, nor with less dread the loud ethereal trumpet from on high gan blow, at which command the powers militant that stood for heaven, in mighty quadrate joined of union irresistible, moved on in silence the right legions, to the sound of instrumental harmony, that breathed heroic ardor 
to adventurous deeds under their godlike leaders in the cause of God and his Messiah. On they move indissolubly firm, nor obvious hill, nor straightening vale, nor wood, nor stream divides their perfect ranks. For high above the ground their march was, and the passive air abore their nimble tread as when the total kind of birds in orderly array on wing came summoned over eden to receive their names of thee so over many a tract of heaven they marched and many a province wide tenfold the length of this terrene at last far in the horizon to the north appeared from skirt to skirt a fiery region stretched in battleless aspect and nearer view bristled with upright beams innumerable of rigid spears and helmets thronged and shields various with boastful argument portrayed the banded powers of satan hasting on with furious expedition for they weaned that selfsame day by fight or by surprise to win the mount of god and on his throne to set the envier of his state the proud aspirer but their thoughts proved fond and vain in the midway, though strange to us it seemed at first that angel should with angel war, and in fierce hosting meet, who want to meet so oft in festivals of joy and love unanimous, as sons of one great sire, hymning the eternal father. But the shout of battle now began, and rushing sound of onset ended soon each milder thought. High in the midst, exalted as a god the apostate in his sun-bright chariot sate idol of majesty divine enclosed with flaming cherubim and golden shields then lighted from his gorgeous throne for now twixt host and host but narrow space was left a dreadful interval and front to front presented stood in terrible array of hideous length before the cloudy van on the rough edge of battle ere it joined satan with vast and haughty strides advanced came towering armed with adamant and gold abdiel that sight endured not where he stood among the mightiest bent on highest deeds and thus his own undaunted heart explores oh heaven that such resemblance of the highest should yet remain where faith and realty remain not wherefore should not strength and might there fail where virtue fails or weakest prove where boldest though to sight unconquerable his puissance trusting in the almighty's aid i mean to try whose reason i have tried unsound and false nor is it aught but just that he who in debate of truth hath won should win in arms in both disputes a light victor though brutish that contest and foul when reason hath to deal with force yet so most reason is that reason overcome so pondering and from his armed peers forth stepping opposite halfway he met his daring foe at this prevention more incensed and thus securely him defied proud art thou met thy hope was to have reached the height of thy aspiring unopposed the throne of god unguarded and his side abandoned at the terror of thy power or potent tongue fool not to think how vain against the omnipotent to rise in arms who out of smallest things could without end have raised incessant armies to defeat thy folly or with solitary hand reaching beyond all limit at one blow unaided could have finished thee and whelmed thy legions under darkness but thou seest all are not of thy train there be who faith prefer and piety to god though then to thee not visible when i alone seemed in thy world erroneous to dissent from all my sect thou seest now learn too late how few sometimes may know when thousands err whom the grand foe with scornful eye askance thus answered 
ill for thee, but in wished hour of my revenge, first sought for, thou returnst from flight, seditious angel, to receive thy merited reward, the first assay of this right hand provoked, since first that tongue, inspired with contradiction, durst oppose a third part of the gods, in synod met their deities to assert, who, while they feel vigor divine within them, can allow omnipotence to none. But well thou comest before thy fellows, ambitious to win from me some plume, that thy success may show destruction to the rest. This pause between, unanswered lest thou boast, to let thee know, at first I thought that liberty and heaven to heavenly souls had been all one. But now I see that most through sloth had rather serve, ministering spirits trained up in feast and song. Such hast thou armed the minstrelsy of heaven, servility with freedom to contend, as both their deeds compared this day shall prove. To whom in brief thus Abdiel stern replied, Apostate, still thou erst, nor end wilt find of erring from the path of truth remote. Unjustly thou depravest it with the name of servitude to serve whom God ordains, or nature. God and nature bid the same when he who rules is worthiest and excels them whom he governs. This is servitude to serve the unwise, or him who hath rebelled against his worthier, as thine now serve thee, thyself not free, but to thyself enthralled, yet lewdly darest thou ministering upbraid. Reign thou in hell thy kingdom, let me serve in heaven God ever blessed, and his divine behests obey, worthiest to be obeyed, Yet chains in hell, not realms, expect. Meanwhile, from me, returned as erst thou saidst from flight, this greeting on thy impious crest receive. So saying, a noble stroke he lifted high, which hung not, but so swift with tempest fell on the proud crest of Satan, that no sight nor motion of swift thought, less could he shield such ruin intercept. Ten paces huge he back recoiled, the tenth on bended knee his massy spear upstayed, as if on earth winds underground or waters forcing way sidelong had pushed a mountain from his seat, half sunk with all his pines. Amazement seized the rebel thrones, but greater rage to see thus foiled their mightiest, ours joy filled and shout presage of victory and fierce desire of battle, whereat Michael bid sound the archangel trumpet. Through the vast of heaven it sounded, and the faithful armies rung Hosanna to the highest. Nor stood at gaze the adverse legions, nor less hideous joined the horrid shock. Now storming fury rose, and clamor such as heard in heaven till now was never arms on armor clashing braid horrible discord and the madding wheels of brazen chariots raged dire was the noise of conflict overhead the dismal hiss of fiery darts in flaming volleys flew and flying vaulted either host with fire so under fiery cope together rushed both battles main with ruinous assault and inextinguishable rage all heaven resounded, and, had earth been then, all earth had to her center shook. What wonder, when millions of fierce encountering angels fought on either side, the least of whom could wield these elements, and arm him with the force of all the regions? How much more of power army against army numberless to raise dreadful combustion warring, and disturb, though not destroy, their happy native seat? Had not the eternal king, omnipotent, from his stronghold of heaven high overruled and limited their might, though numbered such as each divided legion might have seemed a numerous host, in strength each armed hand a legion, 
led in fight yet leader seemed each warrior single as in chief expert when to advance or stand or turn the sway of battle open when and when to close the ridges of grim war no thought of flight none of retreat no unbecoming deed that argued fear each on himself relied as only in his arm the moment lay of victory deeds of eternal fame were done but infinite for wide was spread that war and various sometimes on firm ground a standing fight then soaring on main wing tormented all the air all air seemed then conflicting fire long time in even scale the battle hung till satan who that day prodigious power had shown and met in arms no equal ranging through the dire attack of fighting seraphim confused at length saw where the sword of michael smote and felled squadrons at once with huge two-handed sway brandished aloft the horrid edge came down wide wasting such destruction to withstand he hasted and opposed the rocky orb of tenfold adamant his ample shield a vast circumference at his approach the great archangel from his warlike toils have ceased and glad as hoping here to end intestine war in heaven the arch foe subdued or captive dragged in chains with hostile frown and visage all inflamed first thus began author of evil unknown till thy revolt unnamed in heaven now plenteous as thou seest these acts of hateful strife hateful to all though heaviest by just measure on thyself and thy adherents how hast thou disturbed heaven's blessed peace and into nature brought misery uncreated to the crime of thy rebellion how hast thou instilled thy malice into thousands once upright and faithful now prove false but think not here to trouble holy rest heaven casts thee out from all her confines heaven the seat of bliss brooks not the works of violence and war hence then and evil go with thee along thy offspring to the place of evil hell thou and thy wicked crew there mingle broils ere this avenging sword begin thy doom or some more sudden vengeance winged from god precipitate thee with augmented pain so spake the prince of angels to whom thus the adversary nor think thou with wind of airy threats to awe whom yet with deeds thou canst not hast thou turned the least of these to flight or if to fall but that they rise unvanquished easier to transact with me that thou shouldst hope imperious and with threats to chase me hence err not that so shall end the strife which thou callst evil but we style the strife of glory which we mean to win or turn this heaven itself into the hell thou fablest here however to dwell free if not to reign meanwhile thy utmost force and join him named almighty to thy aid i fly not but have sought thee far and nigh they ended parl and both addressed for fight unspeakable for who though with the tongue of angels can relate or to what things liken on earth conspicuous that may lift human imagination to such height of godlike power for likest gods they seem stood they or moved in stature motion arms fit to decide the empire great heaven now waved their fiery swords and in the air made horrid circles two broad suns their shields blazed opposite while expectation stood in horror from each hand with speed retired where erst was thickest fight the angelic throng and left large field unsafe within the wind of such commotion such as to set forth great things by small if nature's concord broke among the constellations war was sprung two planets rushing from aspect malign of fiercest opposition in mid-sky should combat and their jarring spheres confound together both with next to almighty arm uplifted imminent one stroke they aimed that might determine and not need repeat 
as not of power at once nor odds appeared in might or swift prevention but the sword of michael from the armory of god was given him tempered so that neither keen nor solid might resist that edge it met the sword of satan with steep force to smite descending and in half cut sheer nor stayed but with swift wheel reverse deep entering shared all his right side then satan first knew pain and writhed him to and fro convolved so sore the griding sword with discontinuous wound passed through him but the ethereal substance closed not long divisible and from the gash a stream of nectarous humour issuing flowed sanguine such as celestial spirits may bleed and all his armour stained erewhile so bright forthwith on all side to his aid was run by angels many and strong who interposed defence while others bore him on their shields back to his chariot where he stood retired from off the files of war there they him laid gnashing for anguish and despite and shame to find himself not matchless and his pride humbled by such rebuke so far beneath his confidence to equal god in power yet soon he healed for spirits that live throughout vital in every part not as frail man in entrails heart or head liver or reins cannot but by annihilating die nor in their liquid texture mortal wound receive no more than can the fluid air all heart they live all head all eye all ear all intellect all sense and as they please they limb themselves and colour shape or size assume as likes them best condense or rare meanwhile in other parts like deeds deserve the memorial where the might of gabriel fought and with fierce ensigns pierced the deep array of moloch furious king who him defied and at his chariot wheels to drag him bound threatened nor from the holy one of heaven refrained his tongue blasphemous but anon down cloven to the waist with shattered arms and uncouth pain fled bellowing on each wing uriel and raphael his vaunting foe though huge and in a rock of diamond armed vanquished adramelech and asmodai two potent thrones that to be less than gods disdained but meaner thoughts learned in their flight mangled with ghastly wounds through plate and mail nor stood unmindful abdiel to annoy the atheist crew but with redoubled blow ariel and Ariok and the violence of ramiel scorched and blasted overthrew i might relate of thousands and their names eternize here on earth but those elect angels contented with their fame in heaven seek not the praise of men the other sort in might though wondrous and in acts of war nor of renown less eager yet by doom cancelled from heaven and sacred memory nameless in dark oblivion let them dwell for strength from truth divided and from just illaudable not merits but dispraise and ignominy yet to glory aspires vainglorious and through infamy seeks fame therefore eternal silence be their doom and now their mightiest quelled the battle swerved with many an inroad gored deformed rout entered and foul disorder all the ground with shivered armour strown and on a heap chariot and charioter lay overturned and fiery foaming steeds but stood recoiled or wearied through the faint satanic host defensive scarce or with pale fear surprised then first with fear surprised and sense of pain fled ignominious to such evil brought by sin of disobedience till that hour not liable to fear or flight or pain far otherwise the inviolable saints in cubic phalanx firm advanced entire invulnerable impenetrably armed such high advantages their innocence gave them above their foes not to have sinned not to have disobeyed in fight they stood unwearied unobnoxious to be pained by wound 
though from their place by violence moved. Now night her course began, and over heaven inducing darkness grateful troops imposed, and silence on the odious din of war. Under her cloudy cover both retired, victor and vanquished, on the foughten field Michael and his angels prevalent in camping, placed in guard their watches round, cherubic waving fire. On the other part, Satan, with his rebellious disappeared, far in the dark dislodged and void of rest, his potentates to counsel called by night, and in the midst thus undismayed began. O oh, now in danger tried, now known in arms not to be overpowered, companions dear, found worthy not of liberty alone, to mean pretense, but what we more affect, Honour, dominion, glory, and renown, Who have sustained one day in doubtful fight, And if one day, why not eternal days, What heaven's Lord had powerfulest to send against us From about his throne, and judged sufficient to subdue us to his will, But proves not so, then fallible it seems of future we may deem him, Though till now omniscient thought. True is, less firmly armed, some disadvantage we endured, and pain, till now not known, but known as soon contemned, since now we find this our imperial form incapable of mortal injury, imperishable, and, though pierced with wound, soon closing, and by native vigor healed. Of evil, then, so small, as easy think the remedy. Perhaps more valid arms, weapons more violent, when next we meet, may serve to better us and worse our foes, or equal what between us made the odds, in nature none. If other hidden cause left them superior, while we can preserve unhurt our minds, and understanding sound, due search and consultation will disclose. He sat, and in the assembly next up stood Nisra, of principalities the prime, as one he stood escaped from cruel fights, sore toil, his riven arms to havoc hewn, and cloudy in aspect, thus answering spake. Deliverer from new lords, leader to free enjoyment of our right as gods, Yet hard for gods and to unequal work we find against unequal arms to fight in pain, against unpained, impassive, from which evil ruin must needs ensue. For what avails valor or strength, though matchless, quelled with pain, which all subdues and makes remiss the hands of mightiest? Sense of pleasure we may well spare out of life, perhaps, and not repine but live content, which is the calmest life. But pain is perfect misery, the worst of evils, and excessive overturns all patience. He who therefore can invent with what more forcible we may offend our yet unwounded enemies, or arm ourselves with like defense, to me deserves no less than for deliverance what we owe. Whereto, with look composed, Satan replied, not uninvented that which thou aright believest so main to our success, I bring. Which of us who beholds the bright surface of this ethereous mould whereon we stand, this continent of spacious heaven adorned with plant, fruit, flower, ambrosial, gems, and gold, whose eye so super surveys these things as not to mine from whence they grow deep underground materials dark and crude of spiritous and fiery spume till touched with heaven's ray and tempered they shoot forth so beauteous opening to the ambient light these in their dark nativity the deep shall yield us pregnant with infernal flame, which into hollow engines long and round, thick rammed, 
at the other boar with touch of fire dilated and infuriate shall send forth from far with thundering noise among our foes such implements of mischief as shall dash to pieces and o'erwhelm whatever stands adverse that they shall fear we have disarmed the thunderer of his only dreaded boat nor long shall be our labour yet ere dawn effect shall end our wish meanwhile revive abandon fear to strength and counsel join think nothing hard much less to be despaired he ended and his words their drooping cheer enlightened and their languished hope revived the invention all admired and each how he to be the inventor missed so easy it seemed once found which yet unfound most would have thought impossible yet haply of thy race in future days if malice should abound some one intent on mischief or inspired with devilish machination might devise like instrument to plague the sons of men for sin on war and mutual slaughter bent forthwith from council to the work they flew none arguing stood innumerable hands were ready in a moment up they turned wide the celestial soil and saw beneath the originals of nature in their crude conception sulphurous and nitrous foam they found they mingled and with subtle art concocted and adjusted they reduced to blackest grain and into store conveyed part hidden veins digged up nor hath this earth entrails unlike of mineral and stone whereof to found their engines and their balls of missive ruin part incentive reed provide pernicious with one touch to fire so all ere day spring under conscious night secret they finished and in order set with silent circumspection unespied now when fair morn orient in heaven appeared up rose the victor angels and to arms the matin trumpet sung in arms they stood of golden panoply refulgent host soon banded others from the dawning hills looked round and scouts each coast light armed scour each quarter to descry the distant foe where lodged or whither fled or if for fight in motion or in alt him soon they met under spread ensigns moving nigh in slow but firm battalion back with speediest sail zephyl of cherubim swiftest wing came flying and in mid-air aloud thus cried arm warriors arm for fight the foe at hand whom fled we thought will save us long pursuit this day fear not his flight so thick a cloud he comes and settled in his face i see sad resolution and secure let each his adamantine coat gird well and each fit well his helm gripe fast his orbit shield for an even or high for this day will pour down if i conjecture aught no drizzling shower but rattling storm of arrows barbed with fire so warned he them aware themselves and soon in order quit of all impediment instant without disturb they took alarm and onward move embattled when behold not distant far with heavy pace the foe approaching gross and huge in hollow cube training his devilish enginery impaled on every side with shadowing squadrons deep to hide the fraud at interview both stood a while but suddenly at head appeared satan and thus was heard commanding loud vanguard to right and left the front unfold that all may see who hate us how we seek peace and composure and with open breast stand ready to receive them if they like our overture and turn not back perverse but that i doubt however witness heaven heaven witness thou anon while we discharge freely our part ye who appointed stand do as you have in charge and briefly touch what we propound and loud that all may hear so scoffing in ambiguous words he scarce had ended when to right and left the front divided and to either flank retired 
which to our eyes discovered new and strange a triple mounted row of pillars laid on wheels for like to pillars most they seemed or hollowed bodies made of oak or fir with branches lopped in wood or mountain fell brass iron stony mould had not their mouths with hideous orifice gaped on us wide portending hollow truce at each behind a seraph stood and in his hand a reed stood waving tipped with fire while we suspense collected stood within our thoughts amused not long for sudden all at once the reeds put forth and to a narrow vent applied with nicest touch immediate in a flame but soon obscured with smoke all heaven appeared from those deep-throated engines belched whose roar emboweled with outrageous noise the air and all her entrails tore disgorging foul their devilish glut chained thunderbolts and hail of iron globes which on the victor host levelled with such impetuous fury smote that whom they hit none on their feet might stand though standing else as rocks but down they fell by thousands angel on archangel rolled the sooner for their arms unarmed they might have easily as spirits evaded swift by a quick contraction or remove but now foul dissipation followed and forced rout nor served it to relax their serried files what should they do if on they rushed repulse repeated and indecent overthrow doubled would render them yet more despised and to their foes a laughter for in view stood ranked of seraphim another row in posture to displode their second tire of thunder back defeated to return they worse abhorred satan beheld their flight and to his mates thus in derision called o oh, friends why come not on these victors proud erewhile they fierce were coming and when we to entertain them fair with open front and breast what could we more propounded terms of composition straight they changed their minds flew off and into strange vagaries fell as they would dance yet for to dance they seemed somewhat extravagant and wild perhaps for joy of offered peace but i suppose if our proposals once again were heard we should compel them to a quick result to whom thus belial and like games a mood leader the terms we sent were terms of weight of hard contents and full of force urged home such as we might perceive amused them all and stumbled many who receives them right had need from head to foot well understand not understood this gift they have besides they show us when our foes walk not upright so they among themselves in pleasant vein stood scoffing heightened in their thoughts beyond all doubt of victory eternal might to match with their inventions they presumed so easy and of his thunder made a scorn and all his host derided while they stood a while in trouble but they stood not long rage prompted them at length and found them arms against such hellish mischief fit to oppose forthwith behold the excellence the power which god hath in his mighty angels placed their arms away they threw and to the hills for earth hath this variety from heaven a pleasure situate in hill and dale light as the lightning glimpse they ran they flew from their foundations loosening to and fro they plucked the seated hills with all their load rocks waters woods and by the shaggy tops uplifting bore them in their hands amaze be sure and terror seized the rebel host when coming towards them so dread they saw the bottom of the mountains upward turned till on those cursed engines triple row they saw them whelmed and all their confidence under the weight of mountains buried deep themselves invaded next and on their heads main promontories flung which in the air came shadowing and oppressed whole legions on their armor helped their harm crushed in and bruised into their substance pent which wrought them pain implacable 
and many a dolorous groan long struggling underneath, ere they could wind out of such prison, though spirits of purest light, purest at first, now gross by sinning groan. The rest, in imitation, to like arms betook them, and the neighboring hills up tore. So hills amid the air encountered hills, hurled to and fro with jaculation dire, that underground they fought in dismal shade, infernal noise. War seemed a civil game to this uproar. Horrid confusion heaped upon confusion rose, and now all heaven had gone to rack with ruin overspread, had not the Almighty Father, where he sits, shrined in his sanctuary of heaven, secure, consulting on the sum of things, foreseen this tumult, and permitted all, advised, that his great purpose he might so fulfill, to honour his anointed son avenged upon his enemies, and to declare all power on him transferred. Whence, to his son, the assessor of his throne, he thus began. Effulgence of my glory, son beloved, Son, in whose face invisible is beheld visibly what by deity I am, and in whose hand what by decree I do, second omnipotence, two days are past, two days as we compute the days of heaven, since Michael and his powers went forth to tame these disobedient. Sore hath been their fight, as likeliest was, when two such foes met armed, for to themselves I left them, and thou knowest, equal in their creation they were formed, save what sin hath impaired, which yet hath wrought insensibly, for I suspend their doom. Whence in perpetual fight they needs must last endless, and no solution will be found. War wearied hath performed what war can do, and to disordered rage let loose the reins, with mountains as with weapons armed, which makes wild work in heaven, and dangerous to the main. Two days are therefore past. The third is thine. For thee I have ordained it, and thus far have suffered, that the glory may be thine of ending this great war, since none but thou can end it. Into thee such virtue and grace immense I have transfused, that all may know in heaven and hell thy power above compare and this perverse commotion governed thus to manifest thee worthiest to be heir of all things, to be heir and to be king by sacred unction, thy deserved right. Go then, thou mightiest, in thy father's might. Ascend my chariot, guide the rapid wheels that shake heaven's basis, bring forth all my war, my bow and thunder, my almighty arms gird on, and sword upon thy puissant thigh. Pursue these sons of darkness, drive them out from all heaven's bounds into the utter deep. There let them learn, as likes them, to despise God and Messiah, his anointed king. He said, and on his son, with rays direct, shone full. He all his father full expressed, ineffably into his face received, and thus the filial Godhead answering spake, O Father, O Supreme of heavenly thrones, first, highest, holiest, best, thou always seekst to glorify thy Son, I always thee, as is most just, this I my glory account, my exaltation, and my whole delight, that thou in me well pleased declarest thy will fulfilled, which to fulfill is all my bliss. Scepter and power thy giving I assume, and gladlier shall resign, when in the end thou shalt be all in all, and I in thee for ever, and in me all whom thou lovest, but whom thou hatest, I hate and can put on thy terrors, as I put thy mildness on, image of thee in all things, and shall soon, armed with thy might, rid heaven of these rebelled, to the prepared ill mansion driven down to chains of darkness, and the undying worm that from thy just obedience could revolt, whom to obey 
his happiness entire. Then shall thy saints unmixed, and from the impure far separate, circling thy holy mount, unfeigned hallelujahs to thee sing, hymns of high praise, and I among them chief. So said, he o'er his sceptre bowing rose from the right hand of glory where he sate, and the third sacred morn began to shine, dawning through heaven. Forth rushed with whirlwind sound the chariot of paternal deity, flashing thick flames, wheel within wheel, undrawn, itself instinct with spirit, but convoyed by four cherubic shapes. Four faces each had, wondrous, as with stars the bodies all and wings were set with eyes, with eyes the wheels of beryl and careering fires between. Over their heads a crystal firmament, whereon a sapphire throne, inlaid with pure amber and colors of the showery arch. He, in celestial panoply all armed of radiant urim, work divinely wrought, ascended. At his right hand, victory sate eagle-winged. Beside him hung his bow and quiver with three-bolted thunder stored, and from about him fierce effusion rolled of smoke and bickering flame and sparkles dire. Attended with ten thousand thousand saints he onward came, Far off his coming shone, and twenty thousand, either number heard, Chariots of God, half on each hand were seen. He on the wings of cherub rode sublime on the crystalline sky, In sapphire throned, illustrious far and wide, But by his own first scene them unexpected joy surprised, When the great ensign of Messiah blazed aloft, by angels born, his sign in heaven, under whose conduct Michael soon reduced his army, circumfused on either wing, under their head embodied all in one. Before him, our divine his way prepared. At his command, the uprooted hills retired each to his place. They heard his voice and went obsequious. Heaven his wonted face renewed, and with fresh flowerets hill and valley smiled. This saw his hapless foes, but stood abdured, and to rebellious fight rallied their powers, insensate, hope conceiving from despair. In heavenly spirits could such perverseness dwell? But to convince the proud what signs avail, or wonders move the burette to relent, they, hardened more by what might most reclaim, grieving to see his glory, at the sight took envy, and aspiring to his height stood re-embattled fierce, by force or fraud weaning to prosper, and at length prevail against God and Messiah, or to fall in universal ruin last, and now to final battle drew, disdaining flight or faint retreat. When the great Son of God, to all his host on either hand, thus spake, Stand still in bright array, ye saints, here stand ye angels armed, this day from battle rest. Faithful hath been your warfare, and of God accepted, fearless in his righteous cause, and as ye have received, so have ye done invincibly. But of this cursed crew the punishment to other hand belongs, vengeance is his, or whose he soul appoints. Number to this day's work is not ordained, nor multitude. Stand only and behold God's indignation on these godless poured by me. Not you, but me they have despised, yet envied. Against me is all their rage, because the Father, to whom in heaven supreme kingdom and power and glory appertains, hath honored me according to his will. Therefore to me their doom he hath assigned that they may have their wish to try with me in battle which the stronger proves, they all or I alone against them, since by strength they measure all, of other excellence not emulous, nor care who them excels, nor other strife with them do I vouchsafe. So spake the son and into terror changed his countenance, too severe to be beheld and full of wrath bent on his enemies. At once the four spread out their starry wings with dreadful shade contiguous. 
and the orbs of his fierce chariot rolled as with the sound of torrent floods or of a numerous host he on his impious foes right onward drove gloomy as night under his burning wheels the steadfast empyrean shook throughout all but the throne itself of god full soon among them he arrived in his right hand grasping ten thousand thunders which he sent before him such as in their souls in fixed plagues they astonished all resistance lost all courage down their idle weapons drop or shields and helms and helmed heads he rode of thrones and mighty seraphim prostrate that wished the mountains now might be again thrown on them as a shelter from his ire nor less on either side tempestuous fell his arrows from the fourfold visaged four distinct with eyes and from the living wheels distinct alike with multitude of eyes one spirit in them ruled and every eye glared lightning and shot forth pernicious fire among the cursed that withered all their strength and of their wonted vigour left them drained exhausted spiritless afflicted fall yet half his strength he put not forth but checked his thunder in mid volley for he meant not to destroy but root them out of heaven the overthrown he raised and as a herd of goats or timorous flock together thronged drove them before him thunderstruck pursued with terrors and with furies to the bounds and crystal wall of heaven which opening wide rolled inward and a spacious gap disclosed into the wasteful deep the monstrous sight struck them with horror backward but far worse urged them behind headlong themselves they threw down from the verge of heaven eternal wrath burnt after them to the bottomless pit hell heard the unsufferable noise hell saw heaven ruining from heaven and would have fled affrighted but strict fate had cast too deep her dark foundations and too fast had bound nine days they fell confounded chaos roared and felt tenfold confusion in their fall through his wild anarchy so huge a rout encumbered him with ruin hell at last yawning received them whole and on them closed hell their fit habitation fraught with fire unquenchable the house of woe and pain disburdened heaven rejoiced and soon repaired her mural breach returning whence it rolled sole victor from the expulsion of his foes messiah his triumphal chariot turned to meet him all his saints who silent stood eye-witnesses of his almighty acts with jubilee advanced and as they went shaded with branching palm each order bright sung triumph and him sung victorious king son heir and lord to him dominion given worthiest to reign he celebrated rode triumphant through mid heaven into the courts and temple of his mighty father throned on high who into glory him received where now he sits at the right hand of bliss thus measuring things in heaven by things on earth at thy request and that thou mayst beware by what is past to thee i have revealed what might have else to human race been hid the discord which befell and war in heaven among the angelic powers and the deep fall of those too high aspiring who rebelled with satan he who envies now thy state who now is plotting how he may seduce thee also from obedience that with him bereaved of happiness thou mayst partake his punishment eternal misery which would be all his solace and revenge as a despite done against the most high thee once to gain companion of his woe but listen not to his temptations warn thy weaker let it profit thee to have heard by terrible example the reward of disobedience firm thy might have stood yet fell remember and fear to transgress the end of the sixth book recording by thomas copeland
Book Seven of Paradise Lost by John Milton, Second Edition. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Book Seven, The Argument. Raphael, at the request of Adam, relates how and wherefore this world was first created. That God, after the expelling of Satan and his angels out of heaven, declared his pleasure to create another world and other creatures to dwell therein sends his son with glory and attendance of angels to perform the work of creation in six days the angels celebrate with hymns the performance thereof and his reascension into heaven descend from heaven urania by that name if rightly thou art called whose voice divine following above the olympian hill i soar above the flight of pegasian wing the meaning not the name i call for thou nor of the muses nine nor on the top of old olympus dwellst but heavenly born before the hills appeared or fountain flowed thou with eternal wisdom didst converse wisdom thy sister and with her didst play in presence of almighty father pleased with thy celestial song upled by thee into the heaven of heavens i have presumed an earthly guest and drawn imperial air thy tempering with like safety guided down return me to my native element lest from this flying steed unreined as once bellerophon though from a lower clime dismounted on the lean field i fall erroneous there to wander and forlorn half yet remains unsung but narrower bound within the visible diurnal sphere standing on earth not wrapped above the pole more safe i sing with mortal voice unchanged a horse or mute though fallen on evil days on evil days though fallen and evil tongues in darkness and with dangers compassed round and solitude yet not alone while thou visit'st my slumbers nightly or when morn purples the east still govern thou my song urania and fit audience find though few but drive far off the barbarous dissonance of bacchus and his revellers the race of that wild rout that tore the thracian bard in rhodope where woods and rocks had ears to rapture till the savage clamour drowned both harp and voice nor could the muse defend her son so fail not thou who thee implores for thou art heavenly she an empty dream say goddess what ensued when raphael the affable archangel had forewarned adam by dire example to beware apostasy by what befell in heaven to those apostates lest the like befall in paradise to adam or his race charged not to touch the interdicted tree if they transgress and slight that sole command so easily obeyed amid the choice of all tastes else to please their appetite though wandering he with his consorted eve the story heard attentive and was filled with admiration and deep views to hear of things so high and strange things to their thought so unimaginable as hate in heaven and war so near the peace of god in bliss with such confusion but the evil soon driven back redounded as a flood on those from whom it sprung impossible to mix with blessedness whence adam soon repealed the doubts that in his heart arose and now led on yet sinless with desire to know what nearer might concern him how this world of heaven and earth conspicuous first began when and whereof created for what cause what within eden or without was done before his memory as one whose drought yet scarce allayed still eyes the current stream whose liquid murmur heard new thirst excites proceeded thus to ask his heavenly guest great things and full of wonder in our ears far differing from this world thou hast revealed divine interpreter 
by favour sent down from the empyrean to forewarn us timely of what might else have been our loss unknown which human knowledge could not reach for which to the infinitely good we owe immortal thanks and his admonishment receive with solemn purpose to observe immutably his sovereign will the end of what we are but since thou hast vouchsafed gently for our instruction to impart things above earthly thought which yet concerned our knowing as to highest wisdom seen deign to descend now lower and relate what may no less perhaps avail us known how first began this heaven which we behold distant so high with moving fires adorned innumerable and this which yields or fills all space the ambient air wide it refused embracing round this florid earth what cause moved the creator in his holy rest through all eternity so late to build in chaos and the work begun how soon absolved if unforbid thou mayst unfold what we not to explore the secrets ask of his eternal empire but the more to magnify his works the more we know and the great light of day yet wants to run much of his race though steep suspense in heaven held by thy voice thy potent voice he hears and longer will delay to hear thee tell his generation and the rising birth of nature from the unapparent deep or if the star of evening and the moon haste to thy audience night with her will bring silence and sleep listening to thee will watch or we can bid his absence till thy song end and dismiss the ere the morning shine thus adam his illustrious guest besought and thus the godlike angel answered mild this also thy request with caution asked obtain though to recount almighty works what words or tongue of seraph can suffice or heart of man suffice to comprehend yet what thou canst attain which best may serve to glorify the maker and infer thee also happier shall not be withheld thy hearing such commission from above i have received to answer thy desire of knowledge within bounds beyond abstain to ask nor let thine own inventions hope things not revealed which the invisible king only omniscient hath suppressed in night to none communicable in earth or heaven enough is left besides to search and know but knowledge is as food and needs no less her temperance over appetite to know in measure what the mind may well contain oppresses else with surfeit and soon turns wisdom to folly as nourishment to wind know then that after lucifer from heaven so call him brighter once amidst the host of angels than that star the stars among fell with his flaming legions through the deep into his place and the great sun returned victorious with his saints the omnipotent eternal father from his throne beheld their multitude and to his son thus spake at least our envious foe hath failed who thought all like himself rebellious by whose aid this inaccessible high strength the seat of deity supreme us dispossessed he trusted to have seized and into fraud drew many whom their place knows here no more yet far the greater part have kept i see their station heaven yet populous retains number sufficient to possess her realms though wide and this high temple to frequent with ministries due and solemn rites but lest his heart exalt him in the harm already done to have dispeopled heaven my damage fondly deem i can repair that detriment if such it be to lose self lost and in a moment will create another world out of one man a race of men innumerable there to dwell not here till by degrees of merit raised they open to themselves as length the way up hither under long obedience tried and earth be changed to heaven and heaven to earth one kingdom 
joy and union without end. Meanwhile inhabit lax ye powers of heaven, and thou, my word, begotten son, by thee this I perform, speak thou and be it done. My overshadowing spirit and might with thee I send along. Ride forth and bid the deep within appointed bounds be heaven and earth. Boundless the deep, because I am who fill infinitude, nor vacuous the space. Though I, uncircumscribed, myself retire, and put not forth my goodness, which is free to act or not. Necessity and chance approach not me, and what I will is fate. So spake the Almighty, and to what he spake his word, the filial Godhead gave effect. Immediate are the acts of God, more swift than time or motion, but to human ears cannot without process of speech be told, so told as earthly notion can receive. Great triumph and rejoicing was in heaven when such was heard declared the Almighty's will. Glory they sung to the Most High, good will to future men, and in their dwellings peace. Glory to him whose just avenging ire had driven out the ungodly from his sight, and habitations of the just, to him glory and praise, whose wisdom had ordained good out of evil to create, instead of spirits malign, a better race to bring into their vacant room, and thence diffuse his good to worlds and ages infinite. So sang the hierarchies. Meanwhile the sun on his great expedition now appeared girt with omnipotence, with radiance crowned of majesty divine, sapience and love immense and all his father in him shone about his chariot numberless were poured cherub and seraph potentates and thrones and virtues winged spirits and chariots wing from the armory of god where stand of old myriads between two brazen mountains lodged against a solemn day harnessed at hand celestial equipage and now came forth spontaneous for within them spirit lived, attendant on the Lord. Heaven opened wide her ever-during gates, harmonious sound on golden hinges moving, to let forth the King of glory, in his powerful word and spirit coming to create new worlds. On heavenly ground they stood, and from the shore they viewed the vast, immeasurable abyss, outrageous as a sea, dark, wasteful, wild up from the bottom turned by furious winds and surging waves as mountains to assault heaven's height and with the centre mix the pole silence ye troubled waves and thou deep peace said then omnific word your discord end nor stayed but on the wings of cherubim uplifted in paternal glory rode far into chaos and the world unborn for chaos heard his voice him all his train followed in bright procession to behold creation and the wonders of his might then stayed the fervid wheels and in his hand he took the golden compasses prepared in god's eternal store to circumscribe this universe and all created things one foot he centred and the other turned round through the vast profundity obscure and said thus far extend thus far thy bounds this be thy just circumference o world thus god the heaven created thus the earth matter unformed and void darkness profound covered the abyss but on the watery calm his brooding wings the spirit of god outspread and vital virtue infused and vital warmth throughout the fluid mass but downward purged the black tartarius cold infernal dregs adverse to life then founded then conglobed like things to like the rest to several place disparted and between spun out the air and earth self-balanced on her centre Hung. let there be light said god and forthwith light ethereal first of things quintessence pure sprung from the deep 
and from her native east the journey through the airy gloom began sphered in a radiant cloud for yet the sun was not she in a cloudy tabernacle sojourned the while god saw the light was good and light from darkness by the hemisphere divided light the day and darkness night he named thus was the first day even and morn nor passed uncelebrated nor unsung by the celestial choirs when orient light exhaling first from darkness they beheld birthday of heaven and earth with joy and shout the hollow universal orb they filled and touched their golden hearts and hymning praised god and his works creator hymn they sung both when first evening was and when first morn again god said let there be firmament amid the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters and god made the firmament expanse of liquid pure transparent elemental air diffused in circuit to the uttermost convex of this great round partition firm and sure the waters underneath from those above dividing for as earth so he the world built on circumfluous waters calm in wide crystalline ocean and the loud misrule of chaos far removed lest fierce extremes contiguous might distemper the whole frame and heaven he named the firmament so even and morning chorus sung the second day the earth was formed but in the womb as yet of waters embryon immature involved appeared not over all the face of earth main ocean flowed not idle but with warm prolific humour softening all her globe fermented the great mother to conceive satiate with genial moisture when god said be gathered now ye waters under heaven into one place and let dry land appear immediately the mountains huge appear emergent and their broad bare backs upheave into the clouds their tops ascend the sky so high as heaved the tumid hills so low down sunk a hollow bottom broad and deep capacious bed of waters thither they hasted with glad precipitance uprolled as drops on dust conglobing from the dry part rise in crystal wall or ridge direct for haste such flight the great command impressed on the swift floods as armies at the call of trumpet for of armies thou hast heard troop to their standard so the watery throng wave rolling after wave where way they found if steep with torrent rapture if through plain soft ebbing nor withstood them rock or hill but they or underground or circuit wide with serpent error wandering found their way and on the washy ooze deep channels wore easy ere god had bid the ground be dry all but within those banks where rivers now stream and perpetual draw their humid train the dry land earth and the great receptacle of congregated waters he called seas and saw that it was good and said let the earth put forth the verdant grass herb yielding seed and fruit tree yielding fruit after her kind whose seed is in herself upon the earth he scarce had said when the bare earth till then desert and bare unsightly unadorned brought forth the tender grass whose verdure clad her universal face with pleasant green then herbs of every leaf that sudden flowered opening the various colours and made gay her bosom smelling sweet and these scarce blown forth flourished thick the clustering vine forth crept the smelling gourd up stood the corny reed and battle in her field had the humble shrub and bush with frizzled hair implicit last rose as in dance the stately trees and spread their branches hung with copious fruit or gemmed their blossoms with high woods the hills were crowned with tufts the valleys and each fountain side with borders long the rivers that earth now seemed like to heaven a seat where gods might dwell or wander with delight 
and love to haunt her sacred shades though god had yet not reigned upon the earth and man to till the ground none was but from the earth a dewy mist went up and watered all the ground and each plant of the field which ere it was in the earth god made and every herb before it grew on the green stem god saw that it was good so even and morn recorded the third day again the almighty spake let there be lights high in the expanse of heaven to divide the day from night and let them be for signs for seasons and for days and circling years and let them be for lights as i ordain their office in the firmament of heaven to give light on the earth and it was so and god made two great lights great for their use to man the greater to have rule by day the less by night all turn and made the stars and set them in the firmament of heaven to illuminate the earth and rule the day in their vicissitude and rule the night and light from darkness to divide god saw surveying his great work that it was good for of celestial bodies first the sun a mighty sphere he framed unlightsome first though of ethereal mould then formed the moon globose and every magnitude of stars and sowed with stars the heaven thick as a field of light by far the greater part he took transplanted from her cloudy shrine and placed in the sun's orb made porous to receive and drink the liquid light firm to retain her gathered beams great palace now of light hither as to their fountain other stars repairing in their golden urns draw light and hence the morning planet gilds his horns by tincture or reflection they augment their small peculiar though from human sight so far remote with diminution seen first in his east the glorious lamp was seen regent of day and all the risen round invested with bright rays jocund to run his longitude through heaven's high road the grey dawn and the pleiades before him danced shedding sweet influence less bright the moon but opposite in level west was set his mirror with full face borrowing her light from him for other light she needed none in that aspect and still that distance keeps till night then in the east her turn she shines revolved on heaven's great axle and her reign with thousand lesser lights dividual holds the thousand thousand stars that then appeared spangling the hemisphere then first adorned with their bright luminaries that set and rose glad evening and glad morn crowned the fourth day and god said let the waters generate reptile with spawn abundant living soul and let fowl fly above the earth with wings displayed on the open firmament of heaven and god created the great whales and each soul living each that crept which plenteously the waters generated by their kinds and every bird of wing after his kind and saw that it was good and blessed them saying be fruitful multiply and in the seas and lakes and running streams the waters fill and let the fowl be multiplied on the earth forthwith the sounds and seas each creek and bay with fry innumerable swarm and shoals of fish that with their fins and shining scales glide under the green wave in skulls that oft bank the mid-sea part single or with mate graze the seaweed their pasture and through groves of coral stray or sporting with quick glance show to the sun their waved coats dropped with gold or in their pearly shells at ease attend moist nutriment or under rocks their food in jointed armour watch on smooth the seal and bended dolphins play part huge of bulk wallowing unwieldy enormous in their gait tempest the ocean there leviathan hugest of living creatures on the deep stretched like a promontory sleeps or swims 
and seems a moving land and it is gills draws in and it is trunk spouts out a sea meanwhile the tepid caves and fens and shores their brood as numerous hatch from the egg that soon bursting with kindly rupture forth disclosed their callow young but feathered soon and fledged they summed their pens and soaring there sublime with clang despised the ground under a cloud in prospect there the eagle and stork on cliffs and cedar tops their aries build part loosely wing the region part more wise in common ranged in figure wedge their way intelligent of seasons and set forth their airy caravan high over seas flying and over lands with mutual wing easing their flight so steers the prudent crane her annual voyage borne on winds the air floats as they pass fanned with unnumbered plumes from branch to branch the smaller birds with song solace the woods and spread their painted wings till even nor then the solemn nightingale ceased warbling but all night tuned her soft lays others on silver lakes and rivers bathed their downy breast the swan with arched neck between her white wings mantling proudly rose her state with oary feet yet oft they quit the dank and rising on stiff pennons tower the mid aerial sky others on ground walk firm the crested cock whose clarion sounds the silent hours and the other whose gay train adorns him colored with the florid hue of rainbows and starry eyes the waters thus with fish replenished and the air with fowl evening and morn solemnized the fifth day the sixth and of creation last arose with evening harps and matin when god said let the earth bring forth fowl living in her kind cattle and creeping things and beast of the earth each in their kind the earth obeyed and straight opening her fertile womb teemed at a birth in numerous living creatures perfect forms limbed and full-grown out of the ground uprose as from his lair the wild beast where he wons in forest wild in thicket brake or den among the trees in pairs they rose they walked the cattle in the fields and meadows green those rare and solitary these in flocks pasturing at once and in broad herds upsprung the grassy clods now calved now half appeared the tawny lion pawing to get free his hinder parts then springs as broke from bonds and rampant shakes his brinded mane the ounce the libert and the tiger as the mole rising the crumbled earth above them threw in hillocks the swift stag from underground bore up his branching head scarce from his mole behemoth biggest born of earth upheaved his vastness fleece the flocks and bleating rose as plants ambiguous between sea and land the river horse and scaly crocodile at once came forth whatever creeps the ground insect or worm those waved their limber fans for wings and smallest liniments exact in all the liveries decked of summer's pride with spots of gold and purple azure and green these as a line their long dimensions drew streaking the ground with sinuous trace not all minims of nature some of serpent kind wondrous in length and corpulence involved their snaky folds and added wings first crept the parsimonious emmet provident future in small room large heart enclosed pattern of just equality perhaps hereafter joined in her popular tribes of commonalty swarming next appeared the female bee that feeds her husband drone deliciously and builds her waxen cells with honey stored the rest are numberless and thou their natures know'st and gavest them names needless to thee repeated nor unknown the serpent subtlest beast of all the field of huge extent sometimes with brazen eyes and hairy mane terrific though to thee not noxious but obedient at thy call 
Now heaven in all her glory shone, And rolled her motions as the great first mover's hand First wheeled their course. Earth in her rich attire consummate lovely smiled. Air, water, earth, by fowl, fish, beast, Was flown, was swum, was walked, frequent. And of the sixth day yet remained. There wanted yet the masterwork the end of all yet done, a creature who, not prone and brute as other creatures, but endued with sanctity of reason, might erect his stature, and upright with front serene govern the rest, self-knowing, and from thence magnanimous to correspond with heaven, but grateful to acknowledge whence his good descends, thither with heart and voice and eyes directed in devotion to adore, and worship God supreme, who made him chief of all his works. Therefore the omnipotent eternal Father, for where is not he present, thus to his Son audibly spake. Let us make now man in our image, man in our similitude, and let them rule over the fish and fowl of sea and air, beast of the field, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps the ground. This said, he formed thee, Adam, thee, O man, dust of the ground, and in thy nostrils breathed the breath of life. In his own image he created thee, in the image of God express, and thou becamest a living soul. Male he created thee, but thy consort female for race. Then blessed mankind, and said, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, Subdue it, and throughout dominion hold Over fish of the sea and fowl of the air, And every living thing that moves on the earth. Wherever thus created, for no place is yet distinct by name, Thence, as thou knowst, he brought thee into this delicious grove, this garden, planted with the trees of God, delectable both to behold and taste, and freely all their pleasant fruit for food gave thee. All sorts are here that all the earth yields, variety without end. But of the tree which tasted works knowledge of good and evil, thou mayst not. In the day thou eatst, thou diest. Death is the penalty imposed. Beware, and govern well thy appetite, lest sin surprise thee and her black attendant death. Here finished he, and all that he had made viewed, and behold, all was entirely good. So even and morn accomplished the sixth day. Yet not till the Creator, from his work desisting, though unwearied, up returned, up to the heaven of heavens his high abode, thence to behold this new created world, the addition of his empire, how it showed in prospect from his throne, how good, how fair, answering his great idea. Up he rode, followed with acclamation, and the sound symphonious of ten thousand harps that tuned angelic harmonies. The earth, the air resounded. Thou rememberst, for thou heardst, the heavens and all the constellations rung, the planets in their stations listening stood, while the bright pomp ascended jubilant. Open, ye everlasting gates, they sung. Open, ye heavens, your living doors. Let in the great Creator from his work returned magnificent, his six days' work a world. Open, and henceforth off, for God will deign to visit off the dwellings of just men, delighted, and with frequent intercourse thither will send his winged messengers on errands of supernal grace. So sung the glorious train ascending. He, through heaven, that opened wide her blazing portals, led to God's eternal house direct the way. A broad and ample road, whose dust is gold, and pavement stars, as stars to thee appear, seen in the galaxy, that milky way which nightly 
as a circling zone thou seest powdered with stars and now on earth the seventh evening arose in eden for the sun was set and twilight from the east came on for running night when at the holy mount of heaven's high seated top the imperial throne of godhead fixed forever firm and sure the filial power arrived and sate him down with his great father for he also went invisible yet stayed such privilege hath on the presence and the work ordained author and end of all things and from work now resting blessed and hallowed the seventh day as resting on that day from all his work but not in silence holy kept the harp had work and rested not the solemn pipe and dulcimer all organs of sweet stop all sounds on fret by string or golden wire tempered soft tunings intermixed with voice choral or unison of incense clouds fuming from golden censers hid the mount creation and the six days acts they sung great are thy works jehovah infinite thy power what thought can measure thee or tongue relate thee greater now in thy return than from the giant angels thee that day thy thunders magnified but to create is greater than created to destroy who can impair thee mighty king or bound thy empire easily the proud attempt of spirits apostate and their counsels vain thou hast repelled while impiously they thought thee to diminish and from thee withdraw the number of thy worshippers who seeks to lessen thee against his purpose serves to manifest the more thy might his evil thou usest and from thence createst more good witness this new made world another heaven from heaven gate not far founded in view on the clear hyaline the glassy sea of amplitude almost immense with stars numerous and every star perhaps a world of destined habitation but thou knowest their seasons among these the seat of men earth with her nether ocean circumfused their pleasant dwelling place thrice happy men and sons of men whom god hath thus advanced created in his image there to dwell and worship him and in reward to rule over his works on earth in sea or air and multiply a race of worshippers holy and just thrice happy if they know their happiness and persevere upright so sung they, and the Empyrean rung with hallelujahs. Thus was Sabbath kept. And thy request think now fulfilled, that asked how first this world and face of things began, and what before thy memory was done from the beginning, that posterity, informed by thee, might know. If else thou seekst aught not surpassing human measure, say, notes line 451 bentley's emendation of soul for fowl should be noted see genesis 1 a v margin line 563 stations station in 1674 the end of the seventh book recording by thomas copeland Book Eight of Paradise Lost, Second Edition by John Milton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Book Eight, The Argument. Adam inquires concerning celestial motions, is doubtfully answered and exhorted to search rather things more worthy of knowledge. Adam assents and, still desirous to detain Raphael, relates to him what he remembered since his own creation his placing in paradise, his talk with God concerning solitude and fit society, his first meeting and nuptials with Eve, his discourse with the angel thereupon, who, after admonitions repeated, departs. 
The angel ended, and in Adam's ear so charming left his voice that he a while thought him still speaking, still stood fixed to hear. Then, as new waked, thus gratefully replied, What thanks sufficient or what recompense equal have I to render thee, divine historian, who thus largely hast thou laid the thirst I had of knowledge, and vouchsafed this friendly condescension to relate things else by me unsearchable, now heard with wonder a delight, and, as is due, with glory attributed to the high creator. Something yet of doubt remains, which only thy solution can resolve. When I behold this goodly frame, this world of heaven and earth consisting, and compute their magnitudes, this earth a spot, a grain, an atom, with the firmament compared, and all her numbered stars, that seem to roll spaces incomprehensible, for such the distance argues, and the swift return diurnal, merely to officiate light, round this opacous earth, this punctual spot, one day and night, in all their vast survey useless besides? Reasoning I oft admire how nature, wise and frugal, could commit such disproportions, with superfluous hand, so many nobler bodies to create, greater so manifold, to this one use, broad appears, and on their orbs impose such restless revolution, day by day repeated, while the sedentary earth, that better might with far less compass move, served by more noble than herself, attains her end without least motion, and receives as tribute such a sumless journey brought of incorporeal speed for warmth and light, speed to describe whose swiftness number fails. So spake our sire, and by his countenance seemed entering on studious thoughts abstruse, which Eve perceiving where she sat retired in sight, with lowliness majestic from her seat, and grace that one who saw to wish her stay, rose, and went forth among her fruits and flowers, to visit how they prospered, bud and bloom, her nursery. They at her coming sprung, and touched by her fair tendons, gladly or grew. Yet when she not as not with such discourse delighted, or not capable her ear of what was high, such pleasure she reserved, Adam relating, she sole auditress. Her husband the relator she preferred before the angel, and of him to ask chose rather. He, she knew, would intermix grateful digressions, and solve high dispute with conjugal caresses from his lip not words alone pleased her oh when meet now such pairs in love and mutual honour joined with goddess-like demeanour forth she went not unattended for on her as queen a pomp of winning graces waited still and from about her shot darts of desire into all eyes to wish her still in sight and Raphael, now to Adam's doubt proposed, benevolent and facile, thus replied, To ask or search I blame thee not, for heaven is as the book of God before thee set, wherein to read his wondrous works, and learn his seasons, hours, or days, or months, or years. This to attain, whether heaven move or earth, imports not, if thou reckon right, the rest from man or angel the great architect did wisely to conceal, and not divulge his secrets, to be scanned by them who ought rather admire. Or if they list to try conjecture, be his fabric of the heavens hath left to their disputes, perhaps to move his laughter at their quaint opinions wide hereafter, when they come to model heaven and calculate the stars. How they will wield the mighty frame, how build, unbuild, contrive to save appearances, how gird the sphere with centric and eccentric scribbled or, cycle and epicycle, orb in orb. Already by thy reasoning this I guess, who art to lead thy offspring, and supposest that bodies bright and greater should not serve the less not bright, nor heaven such journeys run, earth sitting still, 
when she alone receives the benefit consider first that great or bright infers not excellence the earth though in comparison of heaven so small nor glistering may of solid good contain more plenty than the sun that barren shines whose virtue on itself works no effect but in the fruitful earth there first received his beams unactive else the vigour find yet not to earth are those bright luminaries officious but to thee earth's habitant and for the heaven's wide circuit let it speak the maker's high magnificence who built so spacious and his line stretched out so far that man may know he dwells not in his own an edifice too large for him to fill lodged in a small partition and the rest ordained for uses to his lord best known the swiftness of those circles attribute though numberless to his omnipotence that to corporeal substances could add speed almost spiritual me thou think'st not slow who since the morning hour set out from heaven where god resides and ere midday arrived in eden distance inexpressible by numbers that have name but this i urge admitting motion in the heavens to show invalid that which thee to doubt it move not that i so affirm though so it seem to thee who hast thy dwelling here on earth god to remove his ways from human sense placed heaven from earth so far that earthly sight if it presume might err in things too high and no advantage gain what if the sun be centred to the world and other stars by his attractive virtue and their own incited dance about him various rounds their wandering course now high now low then hid progressive retrograde or standing still in six thou seest and what if seventh to these the planet earth so steadfast though she seem insensibly three different motions move which else to several spheres thou must describe moved contrary with thwart obliquities or save the sun his labour and that swift nocturnal and diurnal rom supposed invisible else above all stars the wheel of day and night which needs not thy belief if earth industrious of herself fetch day travelling east and with her part averse from the sun's beam meet night her other part still luminous by his ray what if that light sent from her through the wide transpicuous air to the terrestrial moon be as a star enlightening her by day as she by night this earth reciprocal if land be there fields and inhabitants her spots thou seest as clouds and clouds may rain and rain produce fruits in her softened soil for some to eat allotted there and other suns perhaps with their attendant moons thou wilt descry communicating male and female light which to great sexes animate the world stored in each orb perhaps with some that live for such vast room in nature unpossessed by living soul desert and desolate only to shine yet scarce to contribute each orb a glimpse of light conveyed so far down to this habitable which returns light back to them is obvious to dispute but whether thus these things or whether not whether the sun predominant in heaven rise on the earth or earth rise on the sun he from the east his flaming road begin or she from west her silent course advance with inoffensive pace that spinning sleeps on her soft axle while she paces even and bears thee soft with the smooth air along solicit not thy thoughts with matters hid leave them to god above him serve and fear of other creatures as him pleases best wherever placed let him dispose joy thou in what he gives to thee this paradise and thy fair eve 
Heaven is for thee too high to know what passes there. Be lowly wise. Think only what concerns thee and thy being. Dream not of other worlds, what creatures there live, in what state, condition, or degree, contented that thus far hath been revealed not of earth only, but of highest heaven. To whom thus Adam cleared of doubt replied, how fully hast thou satisfied me, pure intelligence of heaven, angel serene, and freed from intricacies, taught to live the easiest way, nor with perplexing thoughts to interrupt the sweet of life, from which God hath bid dwell far off all anxious cares, and not molest us, unless we ourselves seek them with wandering thoughts and notions vague. But apt the mind or fancy is to rove unchecked, and of her roving is no end, till warned or by experience taught, she learn that not to know at large of things remote from use, obscure and subtle, but to know that which before us lies in daily life is the prime wisdom. What is more is fume or emptiness or fond impertinence, and renders us in things that most concern unpractised, unprepared, and still to seek. Therefore, from this high pitch, let us descend a lower flight and speak of things at hand, useful, whence haply mention may arise of something not unseasonable to ask by sufferance and thy wanted favour deigned. Thee I have heard relating what was done ere my remembrance. Now hear me relate my story, which perhaps thou hast not heard, and day is yet not spent. Till then thou seest how subtly to detain thee I devise, inviting thee to hear while I relate, fond were it not in hope of thy reply. For while I sit with thee I seem in heaven, and sweeter thy discourses to my ear than fruits of palm-tree pleasantest to thirst and hunger both from labour at the hour of sweet repast they satiate and soon fill though pleasant but thy words with grace divine imbued bring to their sweetness no satiety to whom thus raphael answered heavenly meek nor are thy lips ungraceful sire of men nor tongue ineloquent for god on thee abundantly his gifts hath also poured inward and outward both his image fair speaking or mute all comeliness and grace attends thee and each word each motion forms nor less think we in heaven of thee on earth than of our fellow servant and inquire gladly into the ways of god with man for god we see hath honoured thee and set on man his equal love say therefore on for I that day was absent as befell, bound on a voyage uncouth and obscure, far an excursion toward the gates of hell, squared in full legion, such command we had, to see that none thence issued forth a spy or enemy while God was in his work, lest he, incensed at such eruption bold, destruction with creation might have mixed. Not that they durst without his leave attempt, but us he sends upon his high behests for state, as sovereign king, and to inure our prompt obedience. Fast we found, fast shut the dismal gates, and barricadoed strong. But long ere our approaching, heard within noise other than the sound of dance or song, torment and loud lament and furious rage. Glad we returned up to the coasts of light ere Sabbath evening, so we had in charge but thy relation now for i attend pleased with thy words no less than thou with mine so spake the godlike power and thus our sire for man to tell how human life began is hard for who himself beginning knew desire with thee still longer to converse induced me as new waked from soundest sleep soft on the flowery herb i found me laid in balmy sweat which with his beams the sun soon dried and on the reeking moisture fed straight toward heaven 
my wondering eyes i turned and gazed awhile the ample sky till raised by quick instinctive motion up i sprung as thitherward endeavouring and upright stood on my feet about me round i saw hill dale and shady woods and sunny plains and liquid laps of murmuring streams by these creatures that lived and moved and walked or flew birds on the branches warbling all things smiled with fragrance and with joy my heart o'erflowed myself i then perused and limb by limb surveyed and sometimes went and sometimes ran with supple joints as lively vigour led but who i was or where or from what cause knew not to speak i tried and forthwith spake my tongue obeyed and readily could name whate'er i saw thou son said i fair light and thou enlightened earth so fresh and gay ye hills and dales ye rivers woods and plains and ye that live and move fair creatures tell tell if ye saw how came i thus how here not of myself by some great maker then in goodness and in power preeminent tell me how may i know him how adore from whom i have that thus i move and live and feel that i am happier than i know while thus i called and strayed i knew not whither from where i first drew air and first beheld this happy light when answer none returned on a green shady bank profuse of flowers pensive i sate me down there gentle sleep first found me and with soft oppression seized my drowsed sense untroubled though i thought i then was passing to my former state insensible and forthwith to dissolve when suddenly stood at my head a dream whose inward apparition gently moved my fancy to believe i yet had being and lived one came with thought of shape divine and said thy mansion wants thee adam rise first man of men innumerable ordained first father called by thee i come thy guide to the garden of bliss thy seat prepared so saying by the hand he took me raised and over fields and waters as in air smooth sliding without step last led me up a woody mountain whose high top was plain a circuit wide enclosed with goodliest trees planted with walks and bowers that what i saw of earth before scarce pleasant seemed each tree loaden with fairest fruit that hung to the eye tempting stirred in me sudden appetite to pluck and eat whereat i wake and found before mine eyes all real as the dream had lively shadowed here had new begun my wandering had not he who was my guide up hither from among the trees appeared presence divine rejoicing but with awe in adoration at his feet i fell submiss he reared me and whom thou saw'st i am said mildly author of all this thou seest above or round about thee or beneath this paradise i give thee count it thine to till and keep and of the fruit to eat of every tree that in the garden grows eat freely with glad heart fear here no dearth but of the tree whose operation brings knowledge of good and ill which i have set the pledge of thy obedience and thy faith amid the garden by the tree of life remember what i warn thee shun to taste and shun the bitter consequence for know the day thou eat'st thereof my sole command transgressed inevitably thou shalt die from that day mortal and this happy state shalt lose expelled from hence into a world of woe and sorrow sternly he pronounced the rigid interdiction which resounds yet dreadful in mine ear though in my choice not to incur 
but soon his clear aspect returned and gracious purpose thus renewed not only these fair bounds but all the earth to thee and to thy race i give as lords possess it and all things that therein live or live in sea or air beast fish and fowl in sign whereof each bird and beast behold after their kinds i bring them to receive from thee their names and pay thee fealty with low subjection understand the same of fish within their watery residence not hither summoned since they cannot change their element to draw the thinner air as thus he spake each bird and beast behold approaching two and two these cowering low with blandishment each bird stooped on his wing i named them as they passed and understood their nature with such knowledge god endued my sudden apprehension but in these i found not what methought i wanted still and to the heavenly vision thus presumed oh by what name for thou above all these above mankind or aught than mankind higher surpassest far my naming how may i adore thee author of this universe and all this good to man for whose well-being so amply and with hands so liberal thou hast provided all things but with me i see not who partakes in solitude what happiness who can enjoy alone or all enjoying what contentment find thus i presumptuous and the vision bright as with a smile more brightened thus replied what calls thou solitude is not the earth with various living creatures and the air replenished and all these at thy command to come and play before thee knowst thou not their language and their ways they also know and reason not contemptibly with these find pastime and bear rule thy realm is large so spake the universal lord and seemed so ordering i with leave of speech implored and humble deprecation thus replied let not my words offend thee heavenly power my maker be propitious while i speak hast thou not made me here thy substitute and these inferior far beneath me set among unequals what society can soar what harmony or true delight which must be mutual in proportion due given and received but in disparity the one intense the other still remiss cannot well suit with either but soon prove tedious alike of fellowship i speak such as i seek fit to participate all rational delight wherein the brute cannot be human consort they rejoice each with their kind lion with lioness so fitly them in pairs thou hast combined much less can bird with beast or fish with fowl so well converse nor with the ox the ape worse then can man with beast and least of all whereto the almighty answered not displeased a nice and subtle happiness i see thou to thyself proposest in the choice of thy associates adam and wilt taste no pleasure though in pleasure solitary what thinkst thou then of me in this my state seem i to thee sufficiently possessed of happiness or not who am alone from all eternity for none i know second to me or like equal much less how have i then with whom to hold converse save with the creatures which i made and those to me inferior infinite descents beneath what other creatures are to thee he ceased i lowly answered to attain the height and depth of thy eternal ways all human thoughts come short supreme of things thou in thyself art perfect and in thee is no deficience found not so is man but in degree the cause of his desire by conversation with his like to help or solace his defects 
no need that thou shouldst propagate already infinite and through all numbers absolute though one but man by number is to manifest his single imperfection and beget like of his like his image multiplied in unity defective which requires collateral love and dearest amity thou in thy secrecy although alone best with thyself accompanied seek'st not social communication yet so pleased canst raise thy creature to what height thou wilt of union or communion deified i by conversing cannot these erect from prone nor in their ways complacence find thus i emboldened spake and freedom used permissive and acceptance found which gained this answer from the gracious voice divine thus far to try thee adam i was pleased and find thee knowing not of beasts alone which thou hast rightly named but of thyself expressing well the spirit within thee free my image not imparted to the brute whose fellowship therefore unmeet for thee good reason was thou freely shouldst dislike and be so minded still i ere thou spakest knew it not good for man to be alone and no such company as then thou sawst intended thee for trial only brought to see how thou couldst judge of fit and meet what next i bring shall please thee be assured thy likeness thy fit help thy other self thy wish exactly to thy heart's desire he ended or i heard no more for now my earthly by his heavenly overpowered which it had long stood under strained to the height in that celestial colloquy sublime as with an object that excels the sense dazzled and spent sunk down and sought repair of sleep which instantly fell on me called by nature as in aid and closed mine eyes mine eyes he closed but open left the cell of fancy my internal sight by which abstract as in a trance methought i saw though sleeping where i lay and saw the shape still glorious before whom awake i stood who stooping opened my left side and took from thence a rib with cordial spirits warm and life-blood streaming fresh wide was the wound but suddenly with flesh filled up and healed the rib he formed and fashioned with his hands under his forming hands a creature grew manlike but different sex so lovely fair that what seemed fair in all the world seemed now mean or in her summed up in her contained and in her looks which from that time infused sweetness into my heart unfelt before and into all things from her air inspired the spirit of love and amorous delight she disappeared and left me dark i waked to find her or for ever to deplore her loss and other pleasures all abjure when out of hope behold her not far off such as i saw her in my dream adorned with what all earth or heaven could bestow to make her amiable on she came led by her heavenly maker though unseen and guided by his voice nor uninformed of nuptial sanctity and marriage rites grace was in all her steps heaven in her eye in every gesture dignity and love i overjoyed could not forbear aloud this turn hath made amends thou hast fulfilled thy words creator bounteous and benign giver of all things fair but fairest this of all thy gifts nor envious i now see bone of my bone flesh of my flesh myself before me woman is her name of man extracted for this cause he shall forgo father and mother and to his wife adhere and they shall be one flesh one heart one soul she heard me thus and though divinely brought yet innocence and virgin modesty her virtue and the conscience of her worth 
that would be wooed and not unsought be won not obvious not obtrusive but retired the more desirable or to say all nature herself though pure of sinful thought wrought in her so that seeing me she turned i followed her she what was honour knew and with obsequious majesty approved my pleaded reason to the nuptial bower i led her blushing like the morn all heaven and happy constellations on that hour shed their selectest influence the earth gave sign of gratulation and each hill joyous the birds fresh gales and gentle airs whispered it to the woods and from their wings flung rose flung odours from the spicy shrub disporting till the amorous bird of night sung spousal and bid haste the evening star on his hilltop to light the bridal lamp thus have i told thee all my state and brought my story to the sum of earthly bliss which i enjoy and must confess to find in all things else delight indeed but such as used or not works in the mind no change nor vehement desire these delicacies i mean of taste sight smell herbs fruits and flowers walks and the melody of birds but here far otherwise transported i behold transported touch here passion first i felt commotion strange in all enjoyments else superior and unmoved here only weak against the charm of beauty's powerful glance or nature failed in me and left some part not proof enough such object to sustain or from my side subducting took perhaps more than enough at least on her bestowed too much of ornament in outward show elaborate of inward less exact for well i understand in the prime end of nature her the inferior in the mind and inward faculties which most excel in outward also her resembling less his image who made both and less expressing the character of that dominion given or other creatures yet when i approach her loveliness so absolute she seems and in herself complete so well to know her own that what she wills to do or say seems wisest virtuousest discreetest best all higher knowledge in her presence falls degraded wisdom in discourse with her loses discountenanced and like folly shows authority and reason on her weight as one intended first not after made occasionally and to consummate all greatness of mind and nobleness their seat build in her loveliest and create an awe about her as a guard angelic placed to whom the angel with contracted brow accuse not nature she hath done her part do thou but thine and be not diffident of wisdom she deserts thee not if thou dismiss not her when most thou needst her nigh by attributing overmuch to things less excellent as thou thyself perceivest for what admirest thou what transports thee so an outside fair no doubt and worthy well thy cherishing thy honouring and thy love not thy subjection weigh with her thyself then value oft times nothing profits more than self-esteem grounded on just and right well managed of that skill the more thou know'st the more she will acknowledge thee her head and to realities yield all her shows made so adorn for thy delight the more so awful that with honour thou mayst love thy mate who sees when thou art seen least wise but if the sense of touch whereby mankind is propagated seem such dear delight beyond all other think the same vouchsafe to cattle and each beast which would not be to them made common and divulged if aught therein enjoyed were worthy to subdue the soul of man or passion in him move what higher in her society thou find'st attractive 
human, rational, love still. In loving thou dost well, in passion not, wherein true love consists not. Love refines the thoughts, and heart enlarges, hath his seat in reason, and is judicious, is the scale by which to heavenly love thou mayst ascend, not sunk in carnal pleasure, for which cause among the beasts no mate for thee was found. To whom thus half abashed, Adam replied, Neither her outside formed so fair, nor aught in procreation common to all kinds, though higher of the genial bed by far, and with mysterious reverence I deem, so much delights me as those graceful acts, those thousand decencies that daily flow from all her words and actions, mixed with love and sweet compliance, which declare unfeigned union of mind or in us both one soul harmony to behold in wedded pair more grateful than harmonious sound to the ear yet these subject not i to thee disclose what inward thence i feel not therefore foiled who meet with various objects from the sense variously representing yet still free approve the best and follow what i approve to love thou blamest me not, for love thou sayst leads up to heaven, is both the way and guide. Bear with me, then, if lawful what I ask. Love not the heavenly spirits? And how their love express they? By looks only? Or do they mix irradiance, virtual or immediate touch? To whom the angel, with a smile that glowed celestial rosy red, Love's proper hue answered. Let it suffice thee that thou know'st us happy, and without love no happiness. Whatever pure thou in the body enjoyst, and pure thou wert created, we enjoy in eminence, and obstacle find none of membrane, joint, or limb, exclusive bars. Easier than air with air, if spirits embrace, total they mix union of pure with pure desiring nor restrained conveyance need as flesh to mix with flesh or soul with soul but i can now no more the parting sun beyond the earth's green cape and verdant isles hesperian sets my signal to depart be strong live happy and love but first of all him whom to love is to obey and keep his great command take heed lest passion sway thy judgment to do aught which else free will would not admit thine and of all thy sons the weal or woe in thee is placed beware i in thy persevering shall rejoice and all the blessed stand fast to stand or fall free in thine own arbitrament it lies perfect within no outward aid require and all temptation to transgress repel so saying he arose whom adam thus followed with benediction since to part go heavenly guest ethereal messenger sent from whose sovereign goodness i adore gentle to me and affable hath been thy condescension and shall be honoured ever with grateful memory thou to mankind be good and friendly still and oft return so parted they the angel up to heaven from the thick shade and adam to his bower notes lines one through four these lines were added in the second edition sixteen seventy four when book seven was divided into two at line six forty line 641 had read to whom thus adam gratefully replied line 269 as and in 1674 the end of the eighth book recording by thomas copeland book nine of paradise lost second edition by john milton this LibriVox recording is in the public domain.
Recording by Thomas Copeland. Paradise Lost, Book Nine, The Argument. Satan, having compassed the earth with meditated guile, returns as a mist by night into paradise, enters into the serpent sleeping. Adam and Eve in the morning go forth to the labors, which Eve proposes to divide in several places, each laboring apart. Adam consents not, alleging the danger, lest that enemy of whom they were forewarned should attempt her found alone. Eve, loath to be thought not circumspect or firm enough, urges her going apart, the rather desirous to make trial of her strength. Adam at last yields. The serpent finds her alone. His subtle approach, first gazing, then speaking with much flattery, extolling Eve above all other creatures. Eve, wondering to hear the serpent speak, asks how he attained to human speech and such understanding not till now. The serpent answers that by tasting of a certain tree in the garden he attained both to speech and reason, till then void of both. Eve requires him to bring her to that tree, and finds it to be the tree of knowledge forbidden. The serpent, now grown bolder, with many wiles and arguments, induces her at length to eat. She, pleased with the taste, deliberates a while whether to impart thereof to Adam or not. At last, brings him of the fruit, relates what persuaded her to eat thereof. Adam, at first amazed, but perceiving her lost, resolves, through vehemence of love, to perish with her, and, extenuating the trespass, eats also of the fruit, the effects thereof in them both. They seek to cover their nakedness, then fall to variance and accusation of one another. No more of talk where God or angel guest with man as with his friend, familiar used to sit indulgent and with him partake rural repast, permitting him the while venial discourse unblamed. I now must change those notes to tragic, foul distrust and breach disloyal on the part of man, revolt and disobedience, on the part of heaven now alienated, distance and distaste, anger and just rebuke and judgment given, that brought into this world a world of woe, sin and her shadow death and misery death's harbinger sad task yet argument not less but more heroic than the wrath of stern achilles on his foe pursued thrice fugitive about troy wall or rage of turnus for lavinia disespoused or neptune's ire or juno's that so long perplexed the greek and cytherea's son if answerable style i can obtain of my celestial patroness who deigns her nightly visitation unimplored and dictates to me slumbering or inspires easy my unpremeditated verse since first this subject for heroic song pleased me long choosing and beginning late not sedulous by nature to indict wars hitherto the only argument heroic deemed chief maestry to dissect with long and tedious habit fabled knights in battle's fame the better fortitude of patience and heroic martyrdom unsung or to describe races and games or tilting furniture and blazoned shields in praises quaint caparisons and steeds bases and tinsel trappings gorgeous knights at juiced and tournament then marshalled feast served up in hall with sewers and seneschal the skill of artifice or office mean not that which justly gives heroic name to person or to poem me of these nor skilled nor studious higher argument remains sufficient of itself to raise that name unless an age too late or cold climate or years damp my intended wing depressed and much they may if all be mine not hers who brings it nightly to my ear the sun was sunk and after him the star of hesperus whose office is to bring twilight upon the earth short arbiter twixt day and night and now from end to end night's hemisphere had veiled the horizon round when satan who late fled before the threats of gabriel out of eden 
now improved in meditated fraud and malice, bent on man's destruction, mogre what might hap of heavier on himself, fearless returned. By night he fled, and at midnight returned from compassing the earth, cautious of day, since Uriel, regent of the sun, descried his entrance, and forewarned the cherubim that kept the watch. Thence full of anguish driven, the space of seven continued nights he rode with darkness. Thrice the equinoctial line he circled, four times crossed the car of night from pole to pole, traversing each collure. On the eighth returned, and on the coast averse from entrance or cherubic watch, by stealth found unsuspected way. There was a place, now not though sin, not time first wrought the change, where Tigris at the foot of paradise into a gulf shot underground, till part rose up a fountain by the tree of life. In with the river sunk, and with it rose Satan, involved in rising mist, then sought where to lie hid. See, he had searched and land from Eden, over Pontus and the pool Myotis, up beyond the river Ob, downward as far Antarctic, and in length west from Orontes to the ocean barred Darien, thence to the land where flows Ganges and Indus. Thus the orb he roamed with narrow search, and with inspection deep considered every creature, which of all most opportune might serve his wiles, and found the serpent subtlest beast of all the field him after long debate irresolute of thoughts revolved his final sentence chose fit vessel fittest imp of fraud in whom to enter and his dark suggestions hide from sharpest sight for in the wily snake whatever slights none would suspicious mark as from his wit and native subtlety proceeding which in other beasts observed doubt might beget of diabolic power active within beyond the sense of brute thus he resolved but first from inward grief his bursting passion into plaints thus poured o oh, earth how like to heaven if not preferred more justly seat worthier of gods as built with second thoughts reforming what was old for what god after better worse would build terrestrial heaven danced round by other heavens that shine yet bear their bright officious lamps light above light for thee alone as seems in thee concentring all the precious beams of sacred influence as god in heaven is centre yet extends to all so thou centring receivest from all those orbs in thee not in themselves all their known virtue appears productive in herb plant and nobler birth of creatures animate with gradual life of growth sense reason all summed up in man with what delight could i have walked thee round if i could joy in aught sweet interchange of hill and valley rivers woods and plains now land now sea and shores with forest crowned rocks dens and caves but i in none of these find place or refuge and the more i see pleasures about me so much more i feel torment within me as from the hateful siege of contraries oh good to me becomes bane and in heaven much worse would be my state. But neither here seek I know, nor in heaven to dwell, unless by maestering heaven supreme, nor hope to be myself less miserable by what I seek, but others to make such as I, though thereby worse to me redound. For only in destroying I find ease to my relentless thoughts, and him destroyed or won to what may work his utter loss for whom all this was made all this will soon follow as to him linked in weal or woe in woe then that destruction wide may range 
to me shall be the glory soul among the infernal powers in one day to have marred what he almighty styled six nights and days continued making and who knows how long before had been contriving though perhaps not longer than since i in one night freed from servitude in glorious well nigh half angelic name and thinner left the throng of his adorers he to be avenged and to repair his numbers thus impaired whether such virtue spent of old now failed more angels to create if they at least are his created or to spite us more determined to advance into our room a creature formed of earth and him endow exalted from so base original with heavenly spoils our spoils what he decreed he effected man he made and for him built magnificent this world and earth his seat him lord pronounced and oh indignity subjected to his service angel wings and flaming ministers to watch and tend their earthly charge of these the vigilance i dread and to elude thus wrapped in mist of midnight vapour glide obscure and pry in every bush and brake where hap may find the serpent sleeping in whose mazy folds to hide me and the dark intent i bring o oh, foul descent that i who erst contended with gods to sit the highest am now constrained into a beast and mixed with bestial slime this essence to incarnate and imbrute that to the height of deity aspired but what will not ambition and revenge descend to who aspires must down as low as high he soared obnoxious first or last to basest things revenge at first though sweet bitter ere long back on itself recoils let it i reck not so it light well aimed since higher i fall short on him who next provokes my envy this new favourite of heaven this man of clay son of despite whom us the more to spite his maker raised from dust spite then with spite is best repaid so saying through each thicket dank or dry like a black mist low creeping he held on his midnight search where soonest he might find the serpent him fast sleeping soon he found in labyrinth of many a round self-rolled his head the midst well stored with subtle wiles not yet in horrid shade or dismal den nor nocent yet but on the grassy herb fearless unfeared he slept in at his mouth the devil entered and his brutal sense in heart or head possessing soon inspired with act intelligential but his sleep disturbed not waiting close the approach of morn now when as sacred light began to dawn in eden on the humid flowers that breathed the morning incense when all things that breathe from the earth's great altar send up silent praise to the creator and his nostrils fill with grateful smell forth came the human pair and joined their vocal worship to the choir of creatures wanting voice that done partake the season prime for sweetest scents and airs then commune how that day they best may ply their growing work for much their work outgrew the hand's dispatch of two gardening so wide and eve first to her husband thus began adam well may we labour still to dress this garden still to tend plant herb and flower our pleasant task enjoined but till more hands aid us the work under our labour grows luxurious by restraint what we by day lop overgrown or prune or prop or bind one night or two with wanton growth derides tending to wild thou therefore now advise or 
hear what to my mind first thoughts present let us divide our labours thou where choice leads thee or where most needs whether to wind the woodbine round this arbour or direct the clasping ivy where to climb while i in yonder spring of roses intermixed with myrtle find what to redress till noon for while so near each other thus all day our task we choose what wonder if so near looks intervene and smiles or object new casual discourse draw on which intermits our day's work brought to little though begun early and our supper comes unearned to whom mild answer adam thus returned sole eve associate soul to me beyond compare above all living creatures dear well hast thou motioned well thy thoughts employed how we might best fulfil the work which here god have assigned us nor of me shalt pass unpraised for nothing lovelier can be found in woman than to study household good and good works in her husband to promote yet not so strictly hath our lord imposed labour as to debar us when we need refreshment whether food or talk between food of the mind or this sweet intercourse of looks and smiles for smiles from reason flow to brute denied and are of love the food love not the lowest end of human life for not to irksome toil but to delight he made us and delight to reason joined these paths and bowers doubt not but our joint hands will keep from wilderness with ease as wide as we need walk till younger hands ere long assist us but if much converse perhaps they satiate to short absence i could yield for solitude sometimes is best society and short retirement urges sweet return but other doubt possesses me lest harm befall thee severed from me for thou knowest what hath been warned us what malicious foe envying our happiness and of his own despairing seeks to work us woe and shame by sly assault and somewhere nigh at hand watches no doubt with greedy hope to find his wish and best advantage us asunder hopeless to circumvent us joined where each to other speedy aid might lend at need whether his first design be to withdraw our fealty from god or to disturb conjugal love than which perhaps no bliss enjoyed by us excites his envy more or this or worse leave not the faithful side that gave thee being still shades thee and protects the wife where danger or dishonour lurks safest and seemliest by her husband stays who guards her or with her the worst endures to whom the virgin majesty of eve as one who loves and some unkindness meets with sweet austere composure thus replied offspring of heaven and earth and all earth's lord that such an enemy we have who seeks our ruin both by thee informed i learn and from the parting angel overheard as in a shady nook i stood behind just then returned at shot of evening flowers but that thou shouldst my firmness therefore doubt to god or thee because we have a foe may tempt it i expected not to hear his violence thou fearst not being such as we not capable of death or pain can either not receive or can repel his fraud is then thy fear which plain infers thy equal fear that my firm faith and love can by his fraud be shaken or seduced thoughts which how found they harbour in thy breast adam misthought of her to thee so dear to whom with healing words adam replied daughter of god and man immortal eve for such thou art from sin and blame entire not diffident of thee do i dissuade thy absence from thy sight but to avoid the tempt itself intended by our foe for he who tempts though in vain at least asperses the tempted with dishonour foul supposed not incorruptible of faith not proof against temptation thou thyself with scorn and anger wouldst resent the offered wrong though ineffectual found misdeem not then if such affront i labour to avert from thee alone which 
on us both at once the enemy though bold will hardly dare or daring first on me the salt shall light nor thou his malice and false guile contemn subtle he needs must be who could seduce angels nor think superfluous others aid i from the influence of thy looks receive access in every virtue in thy sight more wise more watchful stronger if need were of outward strength while shame thou looking on shame to be overcome or overreached would utmost vigour raise and raised unite why shouldst not thou like sense within thee feel when i am present and thy trial choose with me best witness of thy virtue tried so spake domestic adam in his care and matrimonial love but eve who thought less attributed to her faith sincere thus her reply with accent sweet renewed if this be our condition thus to dwell in narrow circuit straitened by a foe subtle or violent we not endued single with like defence wherever met how are we happy still in fear of harm but harm precedes not sin only our foe tempting affronts us with his foul esteem of our integrity his foul esteem sticks no dishonour on our front but turns foul on himself then wherefore shunned or feared by us who rather double on again from his surmise prove false find peace within favour from heaven our witness from the vent and what is faith love virtue unassayed alone without exterior help sustained let us not then suspect our happy state left so imperfect by the maker wise as not secure to single or combined frail is our happiness if this be so and eden were no eden thus exposed to whom thus adam fervently replied o woman best are all things as the will of god ordained them his creating hand nothing imperfect or deficient left of all that he created much less man or aught that might his happy state secure secure from outward force within himself the danger lies yet lies within his power against his will he can receive no harm but god left free the will for what obeys reason is free and reason he made right but bid her well beware and still erect lest by some fair appearing good surprise she dictate false and misinform the will to do what god expressly hath forbid not then mistrust but tender love enjoins that i should mind thee oft and mind thou me firm we subsist yet possible to swerve since reason not impossibly may meet some specious object by the foe suborned and fall into deception unaware not keeping strictest watch as she was warned seek not temptation then which to avoid were better and most likely if from me thou sever not trial will come unsought wouldst thou approve thy constancy approve first thy obedience the other who can know not seeing the attempted who attest but if thou think trial unsought may find us both securer than thus warned thou seemst go for thy stay not free absents thee more go in thy native innocence rely on what thou hast of virtue summon all for god towards thee hath done his part do the hind so spake the patriarch of mankind but eve persisted yet submiss though last replied with thy permission then and thus forewarned chiefly by what thy own last reasoning words touched on thee that our trial when least sought may find us both perhaps far less prepared the willinger i go nor much expect a foe so proud will first the weaker seek so bent the more shall shame him his repulse thus saying from her husband's hand her hand soft she withdrew and like a wood-nymph light oread or dryad 
or of Delia's train, betook her to the groves. But Delia's self in gait surpassed, and goddess-like deport, though not as she with bow and quiver armed, but with such gardening tools, as art, yet rude, guiltless of fire, had formed, or angels brought. To Pales or Pomona thus adorned, like as she seemed, Pomona when she fled Vertumnus, or to Ceres in her prime, yet virgin of Proserpina and Joe. Her long with ardent look his eye pursued, delighted, but desiring more her stay. Oft he to her his charge of quick return repeated, she to him as oft engaged to be returned by noon amid the bower, and all things in best order to invite noontide repast or afternoon's repose. O oh, much deceived, much failing, hapless Eve, of thy presumed return, event perverse, thou never from that hour in paradise foundst either sweet repast or sound repose, such ambush hid among sweet flowers and shades, weighted with hellish rank or imminent, to intercept thy way, or send thee back despoiled of innocence, of faith, of bliss. For now, and since first break of dawn, the fiend, mere serpent in appearance, forth was come, and on his quest, where likeliest he might find the only two of mankind, but in them the whole included race, his purpose prey. In bower and field he sought, where any tuft of grove or garden plot more pleasant lay, their tendance or plantation for delight by fountain or by shady rivulet. He sought them both, but wished his hap might find Eve separate. He wished, but not with hope of what so seldom chanced, when to his wish, beyond his hope, Eve separate he spies, veiled in a cloud of fragrance, where she stood half spied, so thick the roses bushing round about her glowed, oft stooping to support each flower of slender stalk, whose head, though gay carnation, purple azure, or specked with gold, hung drooping unsustained, them she upstays gently with myrtle band, mindless the while herself, though fairest unsupported flower, from her best prop so far, and storm so nigh, Nearer he drew, and many a walk traversed of stateliest cover, cedar, pine, or palm, then voluble and bold, now hid, now seen, among thick-woven arborets and flowers embordered on each bank, the hand of Eve. Spot more delicious than those gardens feigned, or of revived Adonis, or renowned Alcinous, host of old Laertes' son, or that not mystic where the sapient king held dalliance with his fair egyptian spouse much he the place admired the person more as one who long in populous city pent where houses thick and sewers annoy the air forth issuing on a summer's morn to breathe among the pleasant villages and farms adjoined from each thing met conceives delight the smell of grain or tedded grass or kine or dairy each rural sight each rural sound if chance with nymph-like step their virgin pass, what pleasing seemed for her now pleases more, she most, and in her look sums all delight. Such pleasure took the serpent to behold this flowery plat, the sweet recess of Eve thus early, thus alone. Her heavenly form angelic, but more soft and feminine, her graceful innocence, her every air of gesture or least action overawed his malice and with rapid sweet bereaved his fierceness of the fierce intent it brought that space the evil one abstracted stood from his own evil and for the time remained stupidly good of enmity disarmed of guile of hate of envy of revenge but the hot hell that always in him burns though in mid-heaven soon ended his delight and tortures him now more the more he sees of pleasure not for him ordained then soon fierce hate he recollects and all his thoughts of mischief gratulating thus excites thoughts 
whither have ye led me with what sweet compulsion thus transported to forget what hither brought us hate not love nor hope of paradise for hell hope here to taste of pleasure but all pleasure to destroy save what is in destroying other joy to me is lost then let me not let pass occasion which now smiles behold alone the woman opportune to all attempts her husband for i view far round not nigh whose higher intellectual more i shun and strength of courage haughty and of limb heroic built though of terrestrial mould foe not informidable exempt from wound i not so much hath hell debased and pain enfeebled me to what i was in heaven she fair divinely fair fit love for gods not terrible though terror be in love and beauty not approached by stronger hate hate stronger under show of love well feigned the way which to her ruin now i tend so spake the enemy of mankind enclosed in serpent inmate bad and toward eve addressed his way not with indented wave prone on the ground as since but on his rear circular base of rising folds the towered fold above fold a surging maze his head crested aloft and carbuncle his eyes with burnished neck of verdant gold erect amidst his circling spires that on the grass floated redundant pleasing was his shape and lovely never since of serpent kind lovelier not those that in illyria changed hermione and cadmus or the god in epidaurus nor to which transformed ammonian jove or capitoline was seen he with olympias this with her who bore scipio the height of rome with tract oblique at first as one who sought excess but feared to interrupt sidelong he works his way as when a ship by skilful steersman wrought nigh river's mouth or foreland where the wind veers oft as oft so steers and shifts her sail so varied he and of his tortuous train curled many a wanton wreath in sight of eve to lure her eye she busied heard the sound of rustling leaves but minded not as used to such disport before her through the field from every beast more duteous at her call than at circean call the herd disguised he bolder now uncalled before her stood but as in gaze admiring oft he bowed his turret crest and sleek enamelled neck fawning and licked the ground whereon she trod his gentle dumb expression turned at length the eye of eve to mark his play he glad of her attention gained with serpent tongue organic or impulse of vocal air his fraudulent temptation thus began wonder not sovereign mistress if perhaps thou canst who art so wonder much less arm thy looks the heaven of mildness with disdain displeased that i approach thee thus and gaze insatiate i thus single nor have feared thy awful brow more awful thus retired fairest resemblance of thy maker fair thee all things living gaze on all things thine by gift and thy celestial beauty adore with ravishment beheld they are best beheld where universally admired but here in this enclosure wild these beasts among beholders rude and shallow to discern half what in thee is fair one man except who sees thee and what is one who shouldst be seen a goddess among gods adored and served by angels numberless thy daily train so glows the tempter and his proem tuned into the heart of eve his words made way though at the voice much marvelling at length not unamazed she thus in answer spake what may this mean 
language of man pronounced by tongue of brute and human sense expressed the first at least of these i thought denied to beasts whom god on the creation day created mute to all articulate sound the latter i demur for in their looks much reason and in their actions oft appears the serpent subtlest beast of all the field i knew but not with human voice endued redouble then this miracle and say how camest thou speakable of mute and how to me so friendly grown above the rest of brutal kind that daily are in sight say for such wonder claims attention due to whom the guileful tempter thus replied empress of this fair world resplendent he easy to me it is to tell thee all what thou commandst and right thou shouldst be obeyed i was at first as other beasts that graze the trodden herb of abject thoughts and low as was my food nor aught but food discerned for sex and apprehended nothing high till on a day roving the field i chanced a goodly tree far distant to behold loaden with fruit of fairest colours mixed ruddy and gold i nearer drew to gaze when from the boughs a savoury odour blown grateful to appetite more pleased my sense than smell of sweetest fennel or the teats of ewe or goat dropping with milk at eaten unsucked of lamb or kid that tend their play to satisfy the sharp desire i had of tasting those fair apples i resolved not to defer hunger and thirst at once powerful persuaders quickened at the scent of that alluring fruit urged me so keen about the mossy trunk i wound me soon for high from ground the branches would require thy utmost reach or atoms round the tree all other beasts that saw with like desire longing and envying stood but could not reach amid the tree now got where plenty hung tempting so nigh to pluck and eat my fill i spared not for such pleasure till that hour at feed or fountain never had i found sated at length ere long i might perceive strange alteration in me to degree of reason in my inward powers and speech wanted not long though to this shape retained thenceforth to speculations high or deep i turned my thoughts and with capacious mind considered all things visible in heaven or earth or middle all things fair and good but all that fair and good in thy divine semblance and in thy beauty's heavenly ray united i beheld no fair to thine equivalent or second which compelled me thus though importune perhaps to come and gaze and worship thee of right declared sovereign of creatures universal dame so talked the spirited sly snake and eve yet more amazed unwary thus replied serpent thy overpraising leaves in doubt the virtue of that fruit in thee first proved but say where grows the tree from hence how far for many are the trees of god that grow in paradise and various yet unknown to us in such abundance lies our choice as leaves a greater store of fruit untouched still hanging incorruptible till men grow up to their provision and more hands help to disburden nature of her birth to whom the wily adder blithe and glad empress the way is ready and not long beyond a row of myrtles on a flat fast by a fountain one small thicket past of blowing myrrh and balm if thou accept my conduct i can bring thee thither soon lead then said eve he leading swiftly rolled in tangles and made intricate seem straight to mischief swift hope elevates and joy brightens his crest as when a wandering fire compact of unctuous vapour which the night condenses and the cold environs round kindled through agitation to a flame which oft they say some evil spirit attends hovering and blazing with delusive light misleads the mazed night wanderer from his way to bogs and mires 
and oft through pond or pool, there swallowed up and lost from supper far. So glistered the dire snake, and into fraud led Eve, our credulous mother, to the tree of prohibition, root of all our woe. Which, when she saw, thus to her guide she spake, Serpent, we might have spared our coming hither, fruitless to me, though fruit be here to excess, the credit of whose virtue rest with thee, wondrous indeed if cause of such effects, but of this tree we may not taste nor touch. God so commanded, and left that command sole daughter of his voice. The rest we live law to ourselves, our reason is our law, to whom the tempter guilefully replied, Indeed? Hath God then said that of the fruit of all these garden trees ye shall not eat? Yet lords declared of all in earth or air? To whom thus Eve, yet sinless, Of the fruit of each tree in the garden we may eat, But of the fruit of this fair tree amidst the garden God hath said, Ye shall not eat thereof, nor shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She scarce had said, though brief, when now more bold the tempter, but with show of zeal and love to man, and indignation at his wrong, new part puts on, and, as to passion moved, fluctuates disturbed, yet comely, and in act raised as of some great matter to begin, as when of old some orator renowned in Athens or free Rome, where eloquence flourished since mute, to some great cause addressed stood in himself collected while each part motion each act won audience ere the tongue sometimes in height began as no delay of preface brooking through his zeal of right so standing moving and to height upgrown the tempter all impassioned thus began o oh, sacred wise and wisdom giving plant mother of science now i feel thy power within me clear not only to discern things in their causes but to trace the ways of highest agents deemed however wise queen of this universe do not believe those rigid threats of death ye shall not die how should ye by the fruit it gives you life to knowledge by the threatener <laughs> look at me me who have touched and tasted yet both live and life more perfect have attained than fate meant me by venturing higher than my lot shall that be shut to man which to the beast is open or will god incense his ire for such a petty trespass and not praise rather your dauntless virtue whom the pain of death denounced whatever thing death be deterred not from achieving what might lead to happier life, knowledge of good and evil. Of good, how just! Of evil, if what is evil be real, why not known, since easier shunned? God therefore cannot hurt ye and be just, not just, not God, not feared then nor obeyed, though fear itself of death removes the fear. Why then was this forbid? Why but to awe, why but to keep ye low and ignorant, his worshippers? He knows that in the day ye eat thereof your eyes, that seem so clear, yet are but dim, shall perfectly be then opened and cleared, and ye shall be as gods, knowing both good and evil as they know. That ye should be as gods, since I as man, internal man, is but proportion meet, I a brute human ye of human gods so ye shall die perhaps by putting off human to put on gods death to be wished though threatened which no worse than this can bring and what are gods that men may not become as they participating godlike food the gods are first and that advantage use on our belief that all from them proceeds i question it for this fair earth i see warmed by the sun producing every kind them nothing if they all things 
who enclosed knowledge of good and evil in this tree that whoso eats thereof forthwith attains wisdom without their leave and wherein lies the fence that man should thus attain to know what can your knowledge hurt him or this tree impart against his will if all be his or is it envy and can envy dwell in heavenly breasts these these and many more causes import your need of this fair fruit goddess humane reach then and freely taste he ended and his words replete with guile into her heart too easy entrance won fixed on the fruit she gazed which to behold might tempt alone and in her ears the sound yet rung of his persuasive words imprained with reason to her seeming and with truth meanwhile the hour of noon drew on and waked an eager appetite raised by the smell so savoury of that fruit which with desire inclinable now grown to touch or taste solicited her longing eye yet first pausing a while thus to herself she mused great are thy virtues doubtless best of fruits though kept for man and worthy to be admired whose taste too long forborne at first essay gave elocution to the mute and taught the tongue not made for speech to speak thy praise thy praise he also who forbids thy use conceals not from us naming thee the tree of knowledge knowledge both of good and evil forbids us then to taste but his forbidding commends thee more while it infers the good by thee communicated and our want for good unknown sure is not had or had and yet unknown is has not had at all in plain then what forbids he but to know forbids us good forbids us to be wise such prohibitions bind not but if death binds us with after bands what profits then our inward freedom in the day we eat of this fair fruit our doom is we shall die how dies the serpent he hath eaten and lives and knows and speaks and reasons and discerns irrational till then for us alone was death invented or to us denied this intellectual food for beasts reserved for beasts it seems yet that one beast which first hath tasted envies not but brings with joy the good befall him author unsuspect friendly to man far from deceit or guile what fear i then rather what know to fear under this ignorance of good and evil of god or death of law or penalty here grows the cure of all this fruit divine fair to the eye inviting to the taste of virtue to make wise what hinders then to reach and feed at once both body and mind so saying her rash hand in evil hour forth reaching to the fruit she plucked she ate earth felt the wound and nature from her seat sighing through all her works gave signs of woe that all was lost back to the thicket slunk the guilty serpent and well might for eve intent now wholly on her taste naught else regarded such delight till then as seemed in fruit she never tasted whether true or fancied so through expectation high of knowledge nor was godhead from her thought greedily she engorged without restraint and knew not eating death satiate at length and heightened thus with wine jocund and boon thus to herself she pleasingly began oh sovereign virtuous precious of all trees in paradise of operation blessed to sapience hitherto obscured infamed 
and thy fair fruit let hang as to no end created but henceforth my early care not without song each morning and due praise shall tend thee and the fertile burden ease of thy full branches offered free to all till dieted by thee i grow mature in knowledge as the gods who all things know though others envy what they cannot give for had the gift been theirs it had not here thus grown experience next to thee i owe best guide not following thee i had remained in ignorance thou openst wisdom's way and givest excess though secret she retire and i perhaps am secret heaven is high high and remote to see from thence distinct each thing on earth and other care perhaps may have diverted from continual watch our great forbidder safe with all his spies about him but to adam in what sort shall i appear shall i to him make known as yet my change and give him to partake full happiness with me or rather not but keep the odds of knowledge in my power without copart so to add what wants in female sex the more to draw his love and render me more equal and perhaps a thing not undesirable some time superior for inferior who is free this may be well but what if god have seen and death ensue then i shall be no more and adam wedded to another eve shall live with her enjoying i extinct a death to think confirm then i resolve adam shall share with me in bliss or woe so dear i love him that with him all deaths i could endure without him live no life so saying from the tree her step she turned but first low reverence done as to the power that dwelt within whose presence had infused into the plant sciential sap derived from nectar drink of gods adam the while waiting desirous of return had wove of choicest flowers a garland to adorn her tresses and her rural labours crown as reapers oft are wont their harvest queen great joy he promised to his thoughts and new solace in her return so long delayed yet oft his heart divine of something ill misgave him he the faltering measure felt and forth to meet her went the way she took that morn when first they parted by the tree of knowledge he must pass there he her met scarce from the tree returning in her hand a bough of fairest fruit that downy smiled new gathered and ambrosial smell few to him she hasted in her face excuse came prologue and apology to prompt which with bland words at will she thus addressed hast thou not wondered adam at my stay thee i have missed and thought it long deprived thy presence agony of love till now not felt nor shall be twice for never more mean i to try what rash untried i sought the pain of absence from thy sight strange hath been the cause and wonderful to hear this tree is not as we are told a tree of danger tasted nor to evil unknown opening the way but of divine effect to open eyes and make them gods who taste and hath been tasted such the serpent wise or not restrained as we or not obeying hath eaten of the fruit and is become not dead as we are threatened thenceforth endued with human voice and human sense reasoning to admiration and with me persuasively hath so prevailed that i have also tasted and have also found the effects to correspond opener mine eyes dim erst dilated spirits ampler heart and growing up to godhead which for thee chiefly i sought without thee can despise for bliss as thou hast part to me as bliss 
tedious unshared with thee and odious soon thou therefore also taste that equal lot may join us equal joy as equal love lest thou not tasting different degree disjoin us and i then too late renounce deity for thee when fate will not permit thus eve with countenance blithe her story told but in her cheek distemper flushing glowed and the other side adam soon as he heard the fatal trespass done by eve amazed astonied stood and blank while horror chill ran through his veins and all his joints relaxed from his slack hand the garland wreathed for eve down dropped and all the faded roses shed speechless he stood and pale till thus at length first to himself he inward silence broke o fairest of creation last and best of all god's works creature in whom excelled whatever can to sight or thought be formed holy divine good amiable or sweet how art thou lost how on a sudden lost defaced deflowered and thou to death devote rather how hast thou yielded to transgress the strict forbiddance how to violate the sacred fruit forbidden some cursed fraud of enemy hath beguiled thee yet unknown and me with thee hath ruined for with thee certain my resolution is to die how can i live without thee how forgo thy sweet converse and love so dearly joined to live again in these wild woods forlorn should god create another eve and i another rib afford yet loss of thee would never from my heart no no i feel the link of nature draw me flesh of flesh bone of my bone thou art and from thy state mine never shall be parted bliss or woe so having said as one from sad dismay recomforted and after thoughts disturbed submitting to what seemed remediless thus in calm mood his words to eve he turned bold deed thou hast presumed adventurous eve and peril great provoked who thus hast dared had it been only coveting to eye that sacred fruit sacred to abstinence much more to taste it under ban to touch but past who can recall or done undo not god omnipotent nor fate yet so perhaps thou shalt not die perhaps the fact is not so heinous now foretasted fruit profaned first by the serpent by him first made common and unhallowed ere our taste nor yet on him found deadly he yet lives lives as thou saidst and gains to live as man higher degree of life inducement strong to us as likely tasting to attain proportional assent which cannot be but to be gods or angels demigods nor can i think that god creator wise though threatening will in earnest so destroy us his prime creatures dignified so high set over all his works which in our fall for us created needs with us must fail dependent made so god shall uncreate we frustrate do undo and labour lose not well conceived of god who though his power creation could repeat yet would be loath us to abolish lest the adversary triumph and say fickle their state whom god most favours who can please him long me first he ruined now mankind whom will he next matter of scorn not to be given the foe however i with thee have fixed my lot certain to undergo like doom if death consort with thee death is to me as life 
so forcible within my heart i feel the bond of nature draw me to my own my own in thee for what thou art is mine our state cannot be severed we are one one flesh to lose thee were to lose myself so adam and thus eve to him replied o oh, glorious trial of exceeding love illustrious evidence example high engaging me to emulate but short of thy perfection how shall i attain adam from whose dear side i boast me sprung and gladly of our union hear thee speak one heart one soul in both whereof good proof this day affords declaring thee resolved rather than death or aught than death more dread shall separate us linked in love so dear to undergo with me one guilt one crime if any be of tasting this fair fruit whose virtue for of good still good proceeds direct or by occasion hath presented this happy trial of thy love which else so eminently never had been known were it i thought death menaced would ensue this my attempt i would sustain alone the worst and not persuade thee rather die deserted than oblige thee with a fact pernicious to thy peace chiefly assured remarkably so late of thy so true so faithful love unequalled but i feel far otherwise the event not death but life augmented opened eyes new hopes new joys taste so divine that what of sweet before hath touched my sense flat seems to this and harsh on my experience adam freely taste and fear of death deliver to the winds so saying she embraced him and for joy tenderly wept much one that he his love had so ennobled as of choice to incur divine displeasure for her sake or death in recompense for such compliance bad such recompense best merits from the bough she gave him of that fair enticing fruit with liberal hand he scrupled not to eat against his better knowledge not deceived but fondly overcome with female charm earth trembled from her entrails as again in pangs and nature gave a second groan sky lowered and muttering thunder some sad drops wept at completing of the mortal sin original while adam took no thought eating his fill nor eve to iterate her former trespass feared the more to soothe him with her loved society that now as with new wine intoxicated both they swim in mirth and fancy that they feel divinity within them breeding wings wherewith to scorn the earth but that false fruit far other operation first displayed carnal desire inflaming he on eve began to cast lascivious eyes she him as wantonly repaid in lust they burn till adam thus gan eve to dalliance move eve now i see thou art exact of taste and elegant a sapience no small part since to each meaning savour we apply and palate call judicious i the praise yield thee so well this day thou hast purveyed much pleasure we have lost while we abstained from this delightful fruit nor known till now true relish tasting if such pleasure be in things to us forbidden it might be wished for this one tree had been forbidden ten but come so well refreshed now let us play as meet is after such delicious fare for never did thy beauty since the day i saw thee first and wedded thee adorned with all perfections so inflame my sense with ardour to enjoy thee fairer now than ever bounty of this virtuous tree so said he and forbore not glance or toy of amorous intent well understood of eve whose eye darted contagious fire 
her hand he seized, and to a shady bank, thick overhead with verdant roof embowered, he led her nothing loath. Flowers were the couch, pansies and violets and asphodel and hyacinth, earth's freshest, softest lap. There they their fill of love and love's disport took largely of their mutual guilt the seal the solace of their sin till dewy sleep oppressed them wearied with their amorous play soon as the force of that fallacious fruit that with exhilarating vapour bland about their spirits had played and in most powers made her was now exhaled and grosser sleep bred of unkindly fumes with conscious dreams encumbered now had left them up they rose as from unrest, and each the other viewing soon found their eyes how opened, and their minds how darkened. Innocence, that as a veil had shadowed them from knowing ill, was gone. Just confidence and native righteousness and honour from about them naked left to guilty shame. He covered, but his robe uncovered more. So rose the Danite strong, Herculean Samson, from the harlot lap of Philistian Dalila, and waked, shorn of his strength, they destitute and bare of all their virtue, silent and in face confounded, long they sate, as struck and mute, till Adam, though not less than Eve abashed, at length gave utterance to these words constrained. O oh, Eve, in evil hour thou didst give ear to that false worm, Of whomsoever taught to counterfeit man's voice, True in our fall, false in our promised rising, Since our eyes opened we find indeed, And find we know both good and evil, Good lost and evil got. Bad fruit of knowledge, if this be to know, Which leaves us naked thus, of honour void, of innocence, of faith, of purity, our wanted ornaments now soiled and stained, and in our faces evident the signs of foul concupiscence, whence evil store, even shame the last of evils, of the first be sure then. How shall I behold the face henceforth of God or angel, first with joy and rapture so oft beheld, those heavenly shapes will dazzle now this earthly with their blaze insufferably bright. Oh, might I here in solitude live savage, in some glade obscure where highest woods impenetrable to star or sunlight spread their umbrage broad and brown as evening. Cover me, ye pines, ye cedars, with innumerable boughs hide me, where I may never see them more. But let us now, as in bad plight, devise what best may for the present serve to hide the parts of each from other that seem most to shame obnoxious and unseemliest seem, some tree whose broad smooth leaves, together sewed and girded on our loins, may cover round those middle parts, that this newcomer shame there sit not, and reproach us as unclean. So counselled he, and both together went into the thickest wood. There soon they chose the fig tree. Not that kind for fruit renowned, but such as at this day to Indians known in Malabar or Deccan spreads her arms, branching so broad and long, that in the ground the bended twigs take root, and daughters grow about the mother tree, a pillared shade, high overarched, and echoing walks between. There oft the Indian herdsman, shunning heat, shelters in cool, and tends his pasturing herds at loopholes cut through thickest shade. Those leaves they gathered, broad as Amazonian targe, and with what skill they had together sowed, to gird their waist, vain covering, if to hide their guilt and dreaded shame. Oh, how unlike to that first naked glory! Such of late Columbus found the Merican so girt with feathered cincture, naked else and wild among the trees on isles and woody shores. 
thus fenced and as they thought the shame in part covered but not at rest or ease of mind they sate them down to weep nor only tears rained at their eyes but high winds worse within began to rise high passions anger hate mistrust suspicion discord and shook sore their inward state of mind calm region once and full of peace now tossed and turbulent for understanding ruled not and the will heard not her lore both in subjection now to sensual appetite who from beneath usurping over sovereign reason claimed superior sway from thus distempered breast adam estranged in look and altered style speech intermitted thus to eve renewed would thou hadst hearken to my words and stayed with me as i besought thee when that strange desire of wandering this unhappy morn i know not whence possessed thee we had then remained still happy not as now despoiled of all our good shamed naked miserable let none henceforth seek needless cause to approve the faith they owe when earnestly they seek such proof conclude they then begin to fail to whom soon moved with touch of blame thus eve what words have passed thy lips adam severe imputes thou that to my default or will of wandering as thou call'st it which who knows but might as ill have happened thou being by or to thyself perhaps hadst thou been there or here the tempt thou couldst not have discerned fraud in the serpent speaking as he spake no ground of enmity between us known why he should mean me ill or seek to harm was i to have never parted from thy side as good have grown there still a lifeless rib being as i am why didst not thou the head command me absolutely not to go going into such danger as thou saidst too facile then thou didst not much gainsay nay didst permit approve and fair dismiss hadst thou been firm and fixed in thy descent neither had i transgressed nor thou with me to whom then first incensed adam replied is this the love is this the recompense of mine to thee in great believe expressed immutable when thou wert lost not i who might have lived and joyed immortal bliss yet willingly chose rather death with thee and am i now upbraided as the cause of thy transgressing not enough severe it seems in thy restraint what could i more i warned thee i admonished thee foretold the danger and the lurking enemy that lay in wait beyond this had been force and force upon free will hath here no place but confidence then bore thee on secure either to meet no danger or to find matter of glorious trial and perhaps i also erred in overmuch admiring what seemed in thee so perfect that i thought no evil durst attempt thee but i rue that error now which is become my crime and thou the accuser thus it shall befall him who to worth in women over trusting lets her will rule restraint she will not brook and left to herself if evil thence ensue she first his weak indulgence will accuse thus they in mutual accusation spent the fruitless hours but neither self-condemning and of the vain contest appeared no end notes line one eighty six not nor sixteen seventy four line two thirteen here bear sixteen seventy four line three ninety four likest likeliest sixteen seventy four line nine twenty two hast hath sixteen seventy four the end of the ninth book recording by thomas copeland book ten of paradise lost second edition by john milton this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by thomas copeland book ten the argument man's transgression known 
the guardian angels forsake paradise and return up to heaven to approve their vigilance and are approved god declaring that the entrance of satan could not be by them prevented he sends his son to judge the transgressors who descends and gives sentence accordingly then in pity clothes them both and reascends sin and death sitting till then at the gates of hell by wondrous sympathy feeling the success of satan in this new world and the sin by man there committed resolve to sit no longer confined to hell but to follow satan their sire up to the place of man to make the way easier from hell to this world to and fro they pave a broad highway or bridge over chaos according to the track that satan first made then preparing for earth they meet him proud of his success returning to hell the mutual gratulation satan arrives at pandemonium in full assembly relates with boasting his success against man instead of applause is entertained with a general hiss by all his audience transformed with himself also suddenly into serpents according to his doom given in paradise then deluded with a show of the forbidden tree springing up before them they greedily reaching to take of the fruit chew dust and bitter ashes the proceedings of sin and death god foretells the final victory of his son over them and the renewing of all things but for the present commands his angels to make several alterations in the heavens and elements adam more and more perceiving his fallen condition heavily bewails rejects the condolement of eve she persists and at length appeases him then to evade the curse likely to fall on their offspring proposes to adam violent ways which he approves not but conceiving better hope puts her in mind of the late promise made them that her seed should be revenged on the serpent and exhorts her with him to seek peace of the offended deity by repentance and supplication meanwhile the heinous and despiteful act of satan done in paradise and how he and the serpent had perverted eve her husband she to taste the fatal fruit was known in heaven for what can scape the eye of god all-seeing or deceive his heart omniscient who in all things wise and just hindered not satan to attempt the mind of man with strength entire and free will armed complete to have discovered and repulsed whatever wiles of foe or seeming friend for still they knew and ought to have still remembered the high injunction not to taste that fruit whoever tempted which they not obeying incurred what could they less the penalty and manifold in sin deserved to fall up into heaven from paradise in haste the angelic guards ascended mute and sad for man for of his state by this they knew much wondering how the subtle fiend had stolen entrance unseen soon as the unwelcome news from earth arrived at heaven gate displeased all were who heard dim sadness did not spare that time celestial visages yet mixed with pity violated not their bliss about the new arrived in multitudes the ethereal people ran to hear and know how all befell they towards the throne supreme accountable made haste to make appear with righteous plea their utmost vigilance and easily approved when the most high eternal father from his secret cloud amidst in thunder uttered thus his voice assembled angels and ye powers return from unsuccessful charge be not dismayed nor troubled at these tidings from the earth which your sincerest care could not prevent foretold so lately what would come to pass when first this tempter crossed the gulf from hell i told ye then he should prevail and speed on his bad errand man should be seduced and flattered out of all believing lies against his maker no decree of mine concurring to necessitate his fall or touch with lightest moment of impulse his free will to her own inclining left in even scale but fallen he is and now what rests but that the mortal sentence pass on his transgression death denounced that day 
which he presumes already vain and void because not yet inflicted as he feared by some immediate stroke but soon shall find forbearance no acquittance ere day end justice shall not return as bounty scorned but whom send i to judge them whom but thee vicegerent son to thee i have transferred all judgment whether in heaven or earth or hell easy it may be seen that i intend mercy colleague with justice sending thee man's friend his mediator his design both ransom and redeemer voluntary and destined man himself to judge man fall so spake the father and unfolding bright toward the right hand his glory on the sun blazed forth unclouded deity he full resplendent all his father manifest expressed and thus divinely answered mild father eternal thine is to decree mine both in heaven and earth to do thy will supreme that thou in me thy son beloved mayst ever rest well pleased i go to judge on earth these thy transgressors but thou knowst whoever judged the worst on me must light when time shall be for so i undertook before thee and not repenting this obtain of right that i may mitigate their doom on me derived yet i shall temper so justice with mercy as may illustrate most them fully satisfied and thee appease attendance none shall need nor train where none are to behold the judgment but the judged those two the third best absent is condemned convict by flight and rebel to all law conviction to the serpent none belongs thus saying from his radiant seat he rose of high collateral glory him thrones and powers princedoms and dominations ministrant accompanied to heaven gate from whence eden and all the coast in prospect lay down he descended straight the speed of gods time counts not though with swiftest minutes winged now was the sun in western cadence low from noon and gentle airs due at their hour to fan the earth now waked and usher in the evening cool when he from wrath more cool came the mild judge and intercessor both to sentence man the voice of god they heard now walking in the garden by soft winds brought to their ears while day declined they heard and from his presence hid themselves among the thickest trees both man and wife till god approaching thus to adam called aloud where art thou adam want with joy to meet my coming seen far off i miss thee here not pleased thus entertained with solitude where obvious duty erewhile appeared unsought or come i less conspicuous or what change absents thee or what chance detains come forth he came and with him eve more loath though first to offend discountenanced both and discomposed love was not in their looks either to god or to each other but apparent guilt and shame and perturbation and despair anger and obstinacy and hate and guile whence adam faltering long thus answered brief i heard thee in the garden and of thy voice afraid being naked hid myself to whom the gracious judge without revile replied my voice thou oft hast heard and hast not feared but still rejoiced how is it now become so dreadful to thee that thou art naked who hath told thee hast thou eaten of the tree whereof i gave thee charge thou shouldst not eat to whom thus adam sore beset replied o oh, heaven in evil strait this day i stand before my judge either to undergo myself the total crime or to accuse my other self the partner of my life whose failing while her faith to me remains i should conceal and not expose to blame by my complaint but strict necessity subdues me and calamitous constraint 
lest on my head both sin and punishment however insupportable be all devolved though should i hold my peace yet thou wouldst easily detect what i conceal this woman whom thou madest to be my help and gavest me as thy perfect gift so good so fit so acceptable so divine that from her hand i could suspect no ill and what she did whatever in itself her doing seemed to justify the deed she gave me of the tree and i did eat to whom the sovereign presence thus replied was she thy god that her thou didst obey before his voice or was she made thy guide superior or but equal that to her thou didst resign thy manhood and the place wherein god set thee above her made of thee and for thee whose perfection far excelled hers in all real dignity adorned she was indeed and lovely to attract thy love not thy subjection and her gifts were such as under government well seemed unseemly to bear rule which was thy part and person hadst thou known thyself aright so having said he thus to eve in few say woman what is this which thou hast done to whom sad eve with shame nigh overwhelmed confessing soon yet not before her judge bold or loquacious thus abashed replied the serpent me beguiled and i did eat which when the lord god heard without delay to judgment he proceeded on the accused serpent though brute unable to transfer the guilt on him who made him instrument of mischief and polluted from the end of his creation justly then accursed as vitiated in nature more to know concerned not man since he no further knew nor altered his offence yet god at last to satan first in sin his doom applied though in mysterious terms judged as then best and on the serpent thus his curse let fall because thou hast done this thou art accursed above all cattle each beast of the field upon thy belly grovelling thou shalt go and dust shalt eat all the days of thy life between thee and the woman i will put enmity and between thine and her seed her seed shall bruise thy head thou bruise his heel so spake this oracle then verified when jesus son of mary second eve saw satan fall like lightning down from heaven prince of the air then rising from his grave spoiled principalities and powers triumphed in open show and with ascension bright captivity led captive through the air the realm itself of satan long usurped whom he shall tread at last under our feet even he who now foretold his fatal bruise and to the woman thus his sentence turned thy sorrow i will greatly multiply by thy conception children thou shalt bring in sorrow forth and to thy husband's will thine shall submit he over thee shall rule on adam last his judgment he pronounced because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife and eaten of the tree concerning which i charge thee saying thou shalt not eat thereof cursed is the ground for thy sake thou in sorrow shalt eat thereof all the days of thy life thorns also and thistles it shall bring thee forth unbid and thou shalt eat the herb of the field in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for thou out of the ground was taken know thy birth for dust thou art and shalt to dust return so judged he man both judge and saviour sent and the instant stroke of death denounced that day removed far off then pitying how they stood before him naked to the air that now must suffer change disdained not to begin thenceforth the form of servant to assume as when he washed his servant's feet so now as father of his family 
he clad their nakedness with skins of beasts or slain or as the snake with youthful coat repaid and thought not much to clothe his enemies nor he their outward only with the skins of beasts but inward nakedness much more opprobrious with his robe of righteousness arraying covered from his father's sight to him with swift ascent he up returned into his blissful bosom reassumed in glory as of old to him appeased all though all-knowing what had passed with man recounted mixing intercession sweet meanwhile ere thus was sinned and judged on earth within the gates of hell sate sin and death in counter view within the gates that now stood open wide belching outrageous flame far into chaos since the fiend passed through sin opening who thus now to death began o oh, son why sit we here each other viewing idly while satan our great author thrives in other worlds and happier seat provides for us his offspring dear it cannot be but that success attends him if mishap ere this he had returned with fury driven by his avenger since no place like this can fit his punishment or their revenge methinks i feel new strength within me rise wings growing and dominion given me large beyond this deep whatever draws me on or sympathy or some connatural force powerful at greatest distance to unite with secret amity things of like kind by secretest conveyance thou my shade inseparable must with me along for death from sin no power can separate but lest the difficulty of passing back stay his return perhaps over this gulf impassable impervious let us try adventurous work yet to thy power and mine not unagreeable to found a path over this main from hell to that new world where satan now prevails a monument of merit high to all the infernal host easing their passage hence for intercourse or transmigration as the lot shall lead nor can i miss the way so strongly drawn by this new-felt attraction and instinct whom thus the meagre shadow answered soon go whither fate and inclination strong leads thee i shall not lag behind nor err the way thou leading such a scent i draw of carnage prey innumerable and taste the savour of death from all things there that live nor shall i to the work thou enterprisest be wanting but afford thee equal aid so saying with delight he snuffed the smell of mortal change on earth as when a flock of ravenous fowl though many a league remote against the day of battle to a field where armies lie encamped come flying lured with scent of living carcasses designed for death the following day in bloody fight so scented the grim feature and upturned his nostril wide into the murky air sagacious of his quarry from so far then both from out hell gates into the waste wild anarchy of chaos damp and dark flew divers and with power the power was great hovering upon the waters what they met solid or slimy as in raging sea tossed up and down together crowded drove from each side shoaling towards the mouth of hell as when two polar winds blowing adverse upon the cronian sea together drive mountains of ice that stop the imagined way beyond petzora eastward to the rich cathayan coast the aggregated soil death with his mace petrific cold and dry as with a trident smote and fixed as firm as delos floating once the rest his look bound with gorgonian rigour not to move and with asphaltic slime broad as the gate deep to the roots of hell the gathered beach they fastened and the mole immense wrought on over the foaming deep high arc a bridge of length prodigious joining to the wall immovable of this now fenceless world forfeit to death from hence 
a passage broad smooth easy inoffensive down to hell so if great things to small may be compared xerxes the liberty of greece to yoke from susa his memnonian palace high came to the sea and over hellespont bridging his way europe with asia joined and scourged with many a stroke the indignant waves now had they brought the work by wondrous art pontifical a ridge of pendant rock over the vexed abyss following the track of satan to the selfsame place where he first lighted from his wing and landed safe from out of chaos to the outside bare of this round world with pins of adamant and chains they made all fast too fast they made and durable and now in little space the confines met of empyrean heaven and of this world and on the left hand hell with long reach interposed three several ways in sight to each of these three places led and now the way to earth they had descried to paradise first tending when behold satan in likeness of an angel bright betwixt the centaur and the scorpion steering his zenith while the sun in ares rose disguised he came but those his children dear their parents soon discerned though in disguise he after eve seduced unminded slunk into the wood fast by and changing shape to observe the sequel saw his guileful act by eve though all unweeting seconded upon her husband saw the shame that sought vain covertures but when he saw descend the son of god to judge them terrified he fled not hoping to escape but shun the present fearing guilty what his wrath might suddenly inflict that past returned by night and listening where the hapless pair sate in their sad discourse and various plaint thence gathered his own doom which understood not instant but of future time with joy and tidings fraught to hell he now returned and at the brink of chaos near the foot of this new wondrous pontifice unhoped met who to meet him came his offspring dear great joy was at their meeting and at sight of that stupendous bridge his joy increased long he admiring stood till sin his fair enchanting daughter thus the silence broke o oh, parent these are thy magnific deeds thy trophies which thou viewst as not thine own thou art their author and prime architect for i no sooner in my heart divined my heart which by a secret harmony still moves with thine joined in connection sweet that thou on earth hadst prospered which thy looks now also evidence but straight i felt though distant from the worlds between yet felt that i must after thee with this thy son such fatal consequence unites us three hell could no longer hold us in her bounds nor this unvoyageable gulf obscure detain from following thy illustrious track thou hast achieved our liberty confined within hell gates till now thou us empowered to fortify thus far and overlay with this portentous bridge the dark abyss thine now is all this world thy virtue hath won what thy hands builded not thy wisdom gained with odds what war hath lost and fully avenged our foil in heaven here thou shalt monarch reign there didst not there let him still victor sway as battle hath adjudged from this new world retiring by his own doom alienated and henceforth monarchy with thee divide of all things parted by the imperial bounds his quadrature from thy orbicular world or try thee now more dangerous to his throne whom thus the prince of darkness answered glad fair daughter and thou son and grandchild both 
high proof ye now have given to be the race of Satan, for I glory in the name, antagonist of heaven's almighty king. Amply have merited of me, of all the infernal empire, that so near heaven's door triumphal, with triumphal act, have met mine with this glorious work and made one realm, hell and this world, one realm, one continent of easy thoroughfare. Therefore, while I descend through darkness on your road with ease to my associate powers, them to acquaint with these successes, and with them rejoice, you too this way among those numerous orbs, all yours, right down to paradise, descend. There dwell and reign in bliss. Thence on the earth dominion exercise, And in the air, chiefly on man, So lord of all declared, Him first make sure your thrall, And lastly kill. My substitutes I send ye, And create plenipotent on earth, Of matchless might issuing from me. On your joint vigour now my hold of this new kingdom all depends, Through sin to death exposed by my exploit. If your joint power prevail, the fears of hell no detriment need fear, Go and be strong. So saying, he dismissed them. They with speed their course through thickest constellations held, Spreading their bane. The blasted stars looked wan, and planets, planets struck, real eclipse then suffered. The other way Satan went down the causey to hell gate. On either side, disparted chaos, overbuilt, exclaimed, and with rebounding surge the bars assailed, that scorned his indignation. Through the gate, wide open and unguarded, Satan passed, and all about found desolate. For those appointed to sit there had left the charge, Flown to the upper world. The rest were all far to the inland retired, About the walls of Pandemonium, City and proud seat of Lucifer, So by allusion called of that bright star To Satan Paragon. There kept the watch the legions, While the grand in council sate, Solicitous what chance might intercept Their emperor sent, so he departing gave command, and they observed. As when the Tartar, from his Russian foe, By Astrakhan over the snowy plains retires, Or Bactrian Sophi, from the horns of Turkish crescent, Leaves all waste beyond the realm of Aladul, In his retreat to Taurus or Casbin, So these, the late heaven-banished host, Left desert utmost hell, many a dark league, reduced in careful watch round the metropolis, and now expecting each hour the great adventurer from the search of foreign worlds, he, through the midst, unmarked, in show plebeian angel militant of lowest order, passed, and from the door of that Plutonian hall, invisible, ascended his high throne, which under state of richest texture spread at the upper end was placed in regal lustre. Down a while he sate, and round about him saw unseen. At last, as from a cloud, his fulgent head and shape star-bright appeared, or brighter, clad with what permissive glory since his fall was left him, or false glitter. All amazed, at that so sudden blaze the Stygian throng bent their aspect, And whom they wished, beheld, the mighty chief returned. Loud was the claim, forth rushed in haste the great consulting peers, Raised from their dark divan, and with like joy congratulant approached him, Who, with hand, silence, and with these words attention won. Thrones, dominations, princedoms, virtues, powers, For in possession such, not only of right, I call ye, and declare ye now, Return successful beyond hope, To lead ye forth triumphant, Out of this infernal pit, Abominable, accursed, The house of woe, And dungeon of our tyrant. 
now possess as lords a spacious world to our native heaven little inferior by my adventure hard with peril great achieve long were to tell what i have done what suffered with what pain voyaged the unreal vast unbounded deep of horrible confusion over which by sin and death a broad way now is paved to expedite your glorious march but i toiled out my uncouth passage forced to ride the untractable abyss plunged in the womb of unoriginal night and chaos wild that jealous of their secrets fiercely opposed my journey strange with clamorous uproar protesting fate supreme thence how i found the new created world which fame in heaven long had foretold a fabric wonderful of absolute perfection therein man placed in a paradise by our exile made happy him by fraud i have seduced from his creator and the more to increase your wonder with an apple he thereat offended worth your laughter hath given up both his beloved man and all his world to sin and death a prey and so to us without our hazard labor or alarm to range in and to dwell and over man to rule as over all he should have ruled true is me also he hath judged or rather me not but the brute serpent in whose shape man i deceive that which to me belongs is enmity which he will put between me and mankind i am to bruise his heel his seed when is not set shall bruise my head a world who would not purchase with a bruise or much more grievous pain ye have the count of my performance what remains ye gods but up and enter now into full bliss so having said a while he stood expecting the universal shout and high applause to fill his ear when contrary he hears on all sides from innumerable tongues a dismal universal hiss the sound of public scorn he wondered but not long had leisure wondering at himself now more his visage drawn he felt the sharp and spare his arms clung to his ribs his legs entwining each other till supplanted down he fell a monstrous serpent on his belly prone reluctant but in vain a greater power now ruled him punished in the shape he sinned according to his doom he would have spoke but hiss for hiss returned with forked tongue to forked tongue for now were all transformed alike to serpents all as accessories to his bold riot dreadful was the din of hissing through the hall thick swarming now with complicated monsters head and tail scorpion and asp and ambisbena dire serastes horned hydrus and elops drear and dipsas not so thick swarmed once the soil bedropped with blood of gorgon for the isle of Fusa but still greatest he the midst now dragon grown larger than whom the sun engendered in the pythian vale on slime huge python and his power no less he seemed above the rest still to retain they all him followed issuing forth to the open field where all yet left of that revolted rout heaven fallen in station stood or just array sublime with expectation when to see in triumph issuing forth the glorious chief they saw but other sight instead a crowd of ugly serpents horror on them fell and horrid sympathy for what they saw they felt themselves now changing down their arms down fell both spear and shield down they as fast and the dire hiss renewed and the dire form catched by contagion like in punishment as in their crime thus was the applause they meant turned to exploding hiss triumph to shame cast on themselves from their own mouths 
There stood a grove hard by, sprung up with this their change, his will who reigns above, to aggravate their penance, laden with fair fruit, like that which grew in paradise, the bait of Eve used by the tempter. On that prospect strange their earnest eyes they fixed, imagining for one forbidden tree a multitude now risen, to work them further woe or shame yet parched with scalding thirst and hunger fierce though to delude them sent could not abstain but on they rolled in heaps and up the trees climbing sat thicker than the snaky locks that curled megara greedily they plucked the fruitage fair to sight like that which grew near that bituminous lake where sodom flamed this more delusive not the touch but taste deceived they fondly thinking to allay their appetite with gust instead of fruit chewed bitter ashes which the fended taste with spattering noise rejected oft they essayed hunger and thirst constraining drugged as oft with hatefulest disrelish writhed their jaws with soot and cinders filled so oft they fell into the same illusion not as man whom they triumphed once lapsed thus were they plagued and worn with famine long and ceaseless hiss till the lost shape permitted they resumed yearly enjoined some say to undergo this annual humbling certain numbered days to dash the pride and joy for man seduced however some tradition they dispersed among the heathen of their purchase got and fabled how the serpent whom they called Ophion, with your enemy, the wide encroaching Eve, perhaps, had first the rule of high Olympus, thence by Saturn driven, and Ops, ere yet Dictaean Jove was born. Meanwhile in Paradise the hellish pair too soon arrived, sin there in power before, once actual, now in body, and to dwell habitual habitant. Behind her, death, close following pace for pace not mounted yet on his pale horse to whom sin thus began second of satan sprung all-conquering death what think'st thou of our empire now though earned with travail difficult not better far than still at hell's dark threshold of sate watch unnamed undreaded and thyself half starved whom thus the sin-born monster answered soon to me who with eternal famine pine alike is hell or paradise or heaven their best where most with raven i may meet which here though plenteous all too little seems to stuff this maw this vast unhide-bound corpse to whom the incestuous mother thus replied thou therefore on these herbs and fruits and flowers feed first on each beast next and fish and fowl no homely morsels and whatever thing the scythe of time mows down devour unspared till i in man residing through the race his thoughts his looks words actions all infect and season him thy last and sweetest prey this said they both betook them several ways both to destroy or unimmortal make all kinds and for destruction to mature sooner or later which the almighty seeing from his transcendent seat the saints among to those bright orders uttered thus his voice see with what heat these dogs of hell advance to waste and havoc yonder world which I so fair and good created, and had still kept in that state, had not the folly of man let in these wasteful furies, who impute folly to me. So doth the prince of hell and his adherents, that with so much ease I suffer them to enter and possess a place so heavenly, and conniving seem to gratify my scornful enemies, that laugh as if transported with some fit of passion i to them had quitted all at random yielded up to their misrule 
and know not that I called and drew them thither my hell-hounds to lick up the draught and filth which man's polluting sin with taint had shed on what was pure, till, crammed and gorged, nigh burst with sucked and glutted awful, at one fling of thy victorious arm, well-pleasing son. Both sin and death and yawning grave at last, through chaos hurled, obstruct the mouth of hell for ever, and seal up his ravenous jaws. Then heaven and earth renewed shall be made pure to sanctity that shall receive no stain. Till then the curse pronounced on both precedes. He ended, and the heavenly audience loud sung hallelujah, as the sound of seas through multitude that sung. Just are thy ways, righteous are thy decrees on all thy works. Who can extenuate thee? Next, to the Son, destined restorer of mankind, by whom new heaven and earth shall to the ages rise, or down from heaven descend. Such was their song, while the Creator, calling forth by name his mighty angels, gave them several charge as sorted best with present things. The sun had first his precept so to move, so shine, as might affect the earth with cold and heat scarce tolerable, and from the north to call decrepit winter, from the south to bring solstitial summer's heat. To the blank moon her office they prescribed, to the other five their planetary motions and aspects in sextile, square, and trine at opposite, of noxious efficacy, and when to join in synod unbenign and taught the fixed their influence malignant when to shower, which of them, rising with the sun or falling, should prove tempestuous. To the winds they set their corners, when with bluster to confound sea, air, and shore, the thunder when to roll with terror through the dark aerial hall. Some say he bid the angels turn askance the poles of earth twice ten degrees and more from the sun's axle. They with labour pushed oblique the centric globe. Some say the sun was bid turn reins from the equinoctial road like distant bread to Taurus with the seven Atlantic sisters, and the Spartan twins up to the tropic crab, thence down amain by Leo and the Virgin of the Scales, as deep as Capricorn, to bring in change of seasons to each clime. Else had the spring perpetual smiled on earth with vernant flowers, equal in days and nights except to those beyond the polar circles to them day had unbenighted shone while the low sun to recompense its distance in their sight had rounded still the horizon and not known nor east or west which had forbid the snow from cold astarteland and south as far beneath magellan at that tasted fruit the sun as from thyestian banquet turned his course intended Else how had the world inhabited, though sinless, more than now avoided pinching cold and scorching heat? These changes in the heavens, though slow, produced light change on sea and land. Sidereal blast, vapour, and mist, and exhalation hot, corrupt, and pestilent. Now from the north of Norumbega, and the Samoid shore, bursting the brazen dungeon, armed with ice and snow and hail, and stormy gust and flaw, Boreas and Caecus and Argestes loud, and Thrascius rend the woods and seas upturn. With adverse blast upturns them from the south notus, and off air black, with thunderous clouds from Serleona. Thwart of these, as fierce, forth rush the levant and the ponent winds, Eurus and Zephyr with their lateral noise, Sirocco and Libecchio. Thus began outrage from liveless things. But discord, first daughter of sin, among the irrational, death introduced through fierce antipathy. Beast now with beast gan war, and fowl with fowl, and fish with fish. To graze the herb all leaving devoured each other, nor stood much in awe of man, but fled him, or with countenance grim glared on him passing. These were from without, the growing miseries, which Adam saw already in part, though hid in gloomiest shade, 
to sorrow abandoned but worse felt within and in a troubled sea of passions tossed thus to disburden sought with sad complaint o oh, miserable of happy is this the end of this new glorious world and me so late the glory of that glory who now become accursed of blessed hide me from the face of god whom to behold was then my height of happiness yet well if here would end the misery i deserved it and would bear my own deservings but this will not serve all that i eat or drink or shall beget is propagated curse o oh, voice once heard delightfully increase and multiply now death to hear for what can i increase or multiply but curses on my head who of all ages to succeed but feeling the evil on him brought by me will curse my head ill fare our ancestor impure for this we may thank adam but his thanks shall be the execration so besides mine own that bide upon me all from me shall with a fierce reflux on me redound on me as on their natural centre light heavy though in their place no fleeting joys of paradise dear bought with lasting woes did i request thee maker from my clay to mould me man did i solicit thee from darkness to promote me or here place in this delicious garden as my will concurred not to my being it were but right and equal to reduce me to my dust desirous to resign and render back all i received unable to perform thy terms too hard by which i was to hold the good i sought not to the loss of that sufficient penalty why hast thou added the sense of endless woes inexplicable thy justice seems yet to say truth too late i thus contest then should have been refused those terms whatever when they were proposed thou didst accept them wilt thou enjoy the good then cavil the conditions and though god made thee without thy leave what if thy son prove disobedient and reproved retort wherefore didst thou beget me i sought it not wouldst thou admit for his contempt of thee that proud excuse yet him not thy election but natural necessity begot god made thee of choice his own and of his own to serve him thy reward was of his grace thy punishment then justly is at his will be it so for i submit his doom is fair that dust i am and shall to dust return o oh, welcome hour whenever why delays his hand to execute what his decree fixed on this day why do i overlive why am i mocked with death and lengthened out to deathless pain how gladly would i meet mortality my sentence and be earth insensible how glad would lay me down as in my mother's lap there i should rest and sleep secure his dreadful voice no more would thunder in my ears no fear of worse to me and to my offspring would torment me with cruel expectation yet one doubt pursues me still lest all i cannot die lest that pure breath of life the spirit of man which god inspired cannot together perish with this corporeal clod then in the grave or in some other dismal place who knows but i shall die a living death oh thought horrid if true yet why it was but breath of life that sinned what dies but what had life and sin the body properly hath neither all of me then shall die let this appease the doubt since human reach no further knows for though the lord of all be infinite is his wrath also be it man is not so but mortal doomed how can he exercise wrath without end on man whom death must end can he make deathless 
death that were to make strange contradiction which to god himself impossible is held as argument of weakness not of power will he draw out for anger's sake finite to infinite in punished man to satisfy his rigour satisfied never that were to extend his sentence beyond dust and nature's law by which all causes else according still to the reception of their matter act not to the extent of their own sphere but say that death be not one stroke as i supposed bereaving sense but endless misery from this day onward which i feel begun both in me and without me and so last to perpetuity ay me that fear comes thundering back with dreadful revolution on my defenceless head both death and i am found eternal and incorporate both nor i on my part single in me all posterity stands cursed fair patrimony that i must leave ye sons oh were i able to waste it all myself and leave ye none so disinherited how would ye bless me now your curse ah why should all mankind for one man's fault thus guiltless be condemned if guiltless but from me what can proceed but all corrupt both mind and will depraved not to do only but to will the same with me how can the acquitted stand in sight of god him after all disputes forced i absolve all my evasions vain and reasonings though through mazes lead me still but to my own conviction first and last on me me only as the source and spring of all corruption all the blame lights due so might the wrath fond wish couldst thou support that burden heavier than the earth to bear than all the world much heavier though divided with that bad woman thus what thou desirest and what thou fearest alike destroys all hope of refuge and concludes thee miserable beyond all past example and future to satan only like both crime and doom o oh, conscience into what abyss of fears and horrors hast thou driven me out of which i find no way from deep to deeper plunged thus adam to himself lamented loud through the still night not now as ere man fell wholesome and cool and mild but with black air accompanied with damps and dreadful gloom which to his evil conscience represented all things with double terror on the ground outstretched he lay on the cold ground and oft cursed his creation death as oft accused of tardy execution since denounced the day of his offence why comes not death said he with one thrice acceptable stroke to end me shall truth fail to keep her word justice divine not hasten to be just but death comes not at call justice divine mends not her slowest pace for prayers or cries o woods o fountains hillocks dales and bowers with other echo far i taught your shades to answer and resound far other song whom thus afflicted when sad eve beheld desolate where she sate approaching nigh soft words to his fierce passion she essayed but her with stern regard he thus repelled out of my sight thou serpent that name best befits thee with him leagued thyself as false and hateful nothing wants but that thy shape like his and colour serpentine may show thy inward fraud to warn all creatures from thee henceforth lest that too heavenly form pretended to hellish falsehood snare them but for thee i had persisted happy had not thy pride and wandering vanity when least was safe rejected my forewarning and disdained not to be trusted 
longing to be seen, though by the devil himself, him overweening to overreach, but with the serpent meeting, fooled and beguiled, by him thou, I by thee, to trust thee from my side, imagined, wise, constant, mature, proof against all assaults, and understood not all was but a show rather than solid virtue, all but a rib crooked by nature, bent as now appears more to the part sinister from me drawn, well if thrown out as supernumerary to my just number found. Oh, why did God, creator wise, that peopled highest heaven with spirits masculine, create at last this novelty on earth, this fair defect of nature, and not fill the world at once with men as angels without feminine, or find some other way to generate mankind? This mischief had not then befallen, and more that shall befall, innumerable disturbances on earth, through female snares and straight conjunction with this sex for either he never shall find out fit mate but such as some misfortune brings him or mistake or whom he wishes most shall seldom gain through her perverseness but shall see her gained by a far worse or if she love withheld by parents or his happiest choice too late shall meet already linked and wedlock bound to a fell adversary, his hate or shame, which infinite calamity shall cause to human life and household peace confound. He added not, and from her turned. But Eve, not so repulsed, with tears that ceased not flowing and tresses all disordered, at his feet fell humble and embracing them besought his peace, and thus proceeded in her plaint. Forsake me not thus, Adam. Witness, heaven, what love sincere and reverence in my heart I bear thee, and unweeting have offended, unhappily deceived. Thy suppliant I beg and clasp thy knees. Bereave me not, whereon I live, thy gentle looks, thy aid, thy counsel, in this uttermost distress, my only strength and stay. Forlorn of thee, whither shall I betake me, where subsist? While yet we live, scarce one short hour, perhaps, between us two let there be peace, both joining, as joined in injuries, one enmity against a foe by doom express assigned us that cruel serpent. On me exercise not thy hatred for this misery befallen, on me already lost, me than thyself more miserable. Both have sinned, but thou against God only, I against God and thee, and to the place of judgment will return, there with my cries importune heaven, that all the sentence from thy head removed may light on me, sole cause to thee of all this woe, me, me, only just object of his ire. She ended weeping, and her lowly plight, immovable till peace obtained from fault acknowledged and deplored, in Adam wrought commiseration. Soon his heart relented towards her, his life so late and sole delight. Now at his feet, submissive, in distress, creature so fair, his reconcilement seeking, his counsel, whom she had displeased, his aid. As one disarmed, his anger all he lost, and thus with peaceful words upraised her soon. Unwary and too desirous, as before, so now, of what thou know'st not, who desirest the punishment all on thyself, alas, bear thine own first, ill able to sustain his full wrath, whose thou feel'st as yet least part, and my displeasure bears so ill. If prayers could alter high decrees, I to that place would speed before thee, 
and be louder heard that on my head all might be visited thy frailty and infirmer sex forgiven to me committed and by me exposed but rise let us no more contend nor blame each other blamed enough elsewhere but strive in offices of love how we may lighten each other's burden in our share of woe since this day's death denounced if aught i see will prove no sudden but a slow paced evil a long day's dying to augment our pain and to our seed o oh, hapless seed derived to whom thus eve recovering heart replied adam by sad experiment i know how little weight my words with thee can find found so erroneous hence by just event found so unfortunate nevertheless restored by thee vile as i am to place of new acceptance hopeful to regain thy love the sole contentment of my heart living or dying from thee i will not hide but thoughts in my unquiet breast are risen tending to some relief of our extremes or end though sharp and sad yet tolerable as in our evils and of easier choice if care of our descent perplex us most which must be borne to certain woe devoured by death at last and miserable it is to be to others cause of misery our own begotten and of our loins to bring into this cursed world a woeful race that after wretched life must be at last food for so foul a monster in thy power it lies yet ere conception to prevent the race unblessed to being yet unbegot childless thou art childless remain so death shall be deceived his glut and with us too be forced to satisfy his ravenous maw but if thou judge it hard and difficult conversing looking loving to abstain from love's due rites nuptial embraces sweet and with desire to languish without hope before the present object languishing with like desire which would be misery and torment less than none of what we dread then both ourselves and seed at once to free from what we fear for both let us make short let us seek death or he not found supply with our own hands his office on ourselves why stand we longer shivering under fears that show no end but death and have the power of many ways to die the shortest choosing destruction with destruction to destroy she ended here or vehement despair broke off the rest so much of death her thoughts had entertained as dyed her cheeks with pale but adam with such counsel nothing swayed to better hopes his more attentive mind labouring had raised and thus to eve replied eve thy contempt of life and pleasure seems to argue in thee something more sublime and excellent than what thy mind condemns but self-destruction therefore sought refutes that excellence thought in thee and implies not thy contempt but anguish and regret for loss of life and pleasure over loved or if thou covet death as utmost end of misery so thinking to evade the penalty pronounced doubt not but god hath wiselier armed his vengeful ire than so to be forestalled much more i fear lest death so snatched will not exempt us from the pain we are by doom to pay rather such acts of contumacy will provoke the highest to make death in us live then let us seek some safer resolution which methinks i have in view calling to mind with heed part of our sentence that thy seed shall bruise the serpent's head piteous amends unless be meant whom i conjecture our grand foe satan who in the serpent hath contrived against us this deceit to crush his head would be revenge indeed which will be lost by death brought on ourselves or childless days resolved as thou proposest 
so our foe shall scape his punishment ordained and we instead shall double ours upon our heads no more be mentioned than of violence against ourselves and wilful barrenness that cuts us off from hope and savours only rancour and pride impatience and despite reluctance against god and his just yoke laid on our necks remember with what mild and gracious temper he both heard and judged without wrath or reviling we expected immediate dissolution which we thought was meant by death that day when lo to thee pains only in childbearing were foretold and bringing forth soon recompensed with joy fruit of thy womb on me the curse a slope glanced on the ground with labour i must earn my bread what harm idleness had been worse my labour will sustain me and lest cold or heat should injure us his timely care hath unbesought provided and his hands clothed us unworthy pitying while he judged how much more if we pray him will his ear be open and his heart to pity incline and teach us further by what means to shun in clement seasons rain ice hail and snow which now the sky with various face begins to show us in this mountain while the winds blow moist and keen shattering the graceful locks of these fair spreading trees which bids us seek some better shroud some better warmth to cherish our limbs benumbed ere this diurnal star leave cold the night how we his gathered beams reflected may with matter sear foment or by collision of two bodies grind the air at trite to fire as late the clouds justling or pushed with winds rude in their shock tine the slant lightning whose thwart flame driven down kindles the gummy bark of fir or pine and sends a comfortable heat from far which might supply the sun such fire to use and what may else be remedy or cure to evils which our own misdeeds have wrought he will instruct us praying and of grace beseeching him so as we need not fear to pass commodiously this life sustained by him with many comforts till we end in dust our final rest and native home what better can we do than to the place repairing where he judged us prostrate fall before him reverent and there confess humbly our faults and pardon beg with tears watering the ground and with our sighs the air frequenting sent from hearts contrite in sign of sorrow unfeigned and humiliation meek undoubtedly he will relent and turn from his displeasure in whose looks serene when angry most he seemed and most severe what else but favour grace and mercy shone so spake our father penitent nor eve felt less remorse they forthwith to the place repairing where he judged them prostrate fell before him reverent and both confessed humbly their faults and pardon begged with tears watering the ground and with their sighs the air frequenting sent from hearts contrite in sign of sorrow unfeigned and humiliation meek notes line fifty eight may might sixteen seventy four line two forty one avenger avengers sixteen seventy four line three ninety seven those these sixteen seventy four line eight twenty seven they acquitted they then acquitted sixteen seventy four the end of the tenth book recording by thomas copeland Book Eleven of Paradise Lost, Second Edition by John Milton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Book Eleven: The Argument. The Son of God presents to His Father the prayers of our first parents now repenting, and intercedes for them. God accepts them, but declares that they must no longer abide in Paradise. Sends Michael with a band of cherubim to dispossess them but first to reveal to adam future things michael's coming down 
Adam shows to Eve certain ominous signs. He discerns Michael's approach, goes out to meet him. The angel denounces their departure. Eve's lamentation. Adam pleads, but submits. The angel leads him up to a high hill, sets before him in a vision what shall happen till the flood. Thus they in lowliest plight repentant stood praying. For from the mercy seat above prevenient grace descending had removed the stony from their hearts and made new flesh regenerate grow instead that sighs now breathed unutterable which the spirit of prayer inspired and winged for heaven with speedier flight than loudest oratory yet their port not of mean suitors nor important lest seemed their petition than when the ancient pair in fables old less ancient yet than these Deucalion and chaste Pyrrha, to restore the race of mankind drowned, before the shrine of Temis stood devout. To heaven the prayers flew up, nor missed the way by envious winds blown vagabond or frustrate. In they passed, dimensionless through heavenly doors. Then, clad with incense where the golden altar fumed by their great intercessor, came in sight before the Father's throne. Them the glad sun presenting, Thus to intercede began. See, Father, what first fruits on earth are sprung from thy implanted grace in man, these sighs and prayers, which in this golden censer mixed with incense, I thy priest before thee bring, fruits of more pleasing savour from thy seed, sown with contrition in his heart, than those which his own hand manuring all the trees of paradise could have produced, ere fallen from innocence. Now, therefore, bend thine ear to supplication, hear his sighs, though mute, unskilful with what words to pray, let me interpret for him, me his advocate and propitiation, all his works on me, good or not good, engraft. My merit, those shall perfect, and for these my death shall pay. Accept me, and in me, from these receive the smell of peace toward mankind. Let him live before thee reconciled, at least his days, numbered, though sad, till death, his doom, which I to mitigate thus plead, not to reverse, to better life shall yield him, where with me all my redeemed may dwell in joy and bliss, made one with me as I with thee am one. To whom the Father, without cloud, serene, all thy request for man, accepted son, obtain. All thy request was my decree. But longer in that paradise to dwell, the law I gave to nature him forbids. Those pure immortal elements that know no gross, no unharmonious mixture foul, eject him, tainted now, and purge him off as a distemper, gross to air as gross, and mortal food as may dispose him best for dissolution wrought by sin, that first distempered all things, and of incorrupt corrupted. I at first with two fair gifts created him endowed, with happiness and immortality. That fondly lost, this other served but to eternize woe, till I provided death. So death becomes his final remedy, and after life tried in sharp tribulation, and refined by faith and faithful works to second life, waked in the renovation of the just, resigns him up with heaven and earth renewed. But let us call to synod all the blessed through heaven's wide bounds. From them I will not hide my judgments, how with mankind I proceed, as how with peccant angels late they saw, and in their state, though firm, stood more confirmed. He ended and the sun gave signal high to the bright minister that watched, he blew his trumpet, heard in Oreb since, perhaps, when God descended, and perhaps once more to sound a general doom. The angelic blast filled all the regions, from their blissful bowers of amaranthine shade, fountain or spring by the waters of life, where'er they sate in fellowships of joy, the sons of light hasted, resorting to the summons high, and took their seats, till from his throne supreme the Almighty thus pronounced his sovereign will. O sons, 
Like one of us man is become, To know both good and evil, Since his taste of that defended fruit. But let him boast his knowledge Of good lost and evil got. Happier had it sufficed him To have known good by itself, And evil not at all. He sorrows now, repents, and prays contrite, my motions in him. Longer than they move, his heart I know, how variable and vain self-left. Lest therefore his now bolder hand reach also to the tree of life, and eat, and live for ever, dream at least to live for ever, to remove him I decree, and send him from the garden forth, to till the ground whence he was taken, fitter soil michael this my behest have thou in charge take to thee from among the cherubim thy choice of flaming warriors lest the fiend or in behalf of man or to invade vacant possession some new trouble raise haste thee and from the paradise of god without remorse drive out the sinful pair from hallowed ground the unholy and denounce to them and to their progeny from thence perpetual banishment Yet lest they faint at the sad sentence rigorously urged, For I behold them softened, and with tears bewailing their excess, All terror hide. If patiently thy bidding they obey, Dismiss them not disconsolate, Reveal to Adam what shall come in future days, As I shall thee enlighten. Intermix my covenant in the woman's seed renewed, So send them forth, though sorrowing yet in peace and on the east side of the garden place where entrance up from eden easiest climbs cherubic watch and of a sword the flame wide waving all approach far off to fright and guard all passage to the tree of life lest paradise a receptacle prove to spirits foul and all my trees the prey with whose stolen fruit man once more to delude he ceased and the archangelic power prepared for swift descent with him the cohort bright of watchful cherubim four faces each had like a double janus all the shapes spangled with eyes more numerous than those of argus and more wakeful than to drowse charmed with arcadian pipe the pastoral reed of hermes or his opiate rod meanwhile to resalute the world with sacred light leucothea waked and with fresh dews embalmed the earth when Adam and first matron Eve had ended now their orisons, and found strength added from above, new hope to spring out of despair, joy, but with fear yet linked, which thus to Eve his welcome words renewed. Eve, easily may faith admit that all the good which we enjoy from heaven descends, but that from us aught should ascend to heaven so prevalent is to concern the mind of god high blessed or to incline his will hard to belief may seem yet this will prayer or one short sigh of human breath upborne even to the seat of god for since i sought by prayer the offended deity to appease kneeled and before him humbled all my heart methought i saw him placable and mild bending his ear persuasion in me grew that i was heard with favour peace returned home to my breast and to my memory his promise that thy seed shall bruise our foe which then not minded in dismay yet now assures me that the bitterness of death is past and we shall live whence hail to thee eve rightly called mother of all mankind mother of all things living since by thee man is to live and all things live for man to whom thus eve with sad demeanour meek ill worthy i such title should belong to me transgressor who for thee ordained a help became thy snare to me reproach rather belongs distrust and all dispraise but infinite in pardon was my judge that i who first brought death on all and graced the source of life next favourable thou who highly thus to entitle me vouchsafed far other name deserving 
but the field to labour calls us now with sweat imposed though after sleepless night for see the morn all unconcerned with our unrest begins her rosy progress smiling let us forth i never from thy side henceforth to stray where e'er our day's work lies though now enjoined laborious till day droop while here we dwell what can be toilsome in these pleasant walks here let us live though in fallen state content so spake so wished much humbled eve but fate subscribed not nature first gave signs impressed on bird beast air air suddenly eclipsed after short blush of morn nigh in her sight the bird of jove stooped from his airy tower two birds of gayest plume before him drove down from a hill the beast that reigns in woods first hunter then pursued a gentle brace goodliest of all the forest heart and hind direct to beastern gate was bent their flight adam observed and with his eye the chase pursuing not unmoved to eve thus spake o oh, eve some further change awaits us nigh which heaven by these mute signs in nature shows for runners of his purpose or to warn us haply too secure of our discharge from penalty because from death released some days how long and what till then our life who knows or more than this that we are dust and thither must return and be no more why else this double object in our sight of flight pursued in there and o'er the ground one way the self-same hour why in the east darkness ere day's mid course and morning light more orient in yon western cloud that draws o'er the blue firmament a radiant white and slow descends with something heavenly fraught he erred not for by this the heavenly bands down from a sky of jasper lighted now in paradise and on a hill made alt a glorious apparition had not doubt and carnal fear that day dimmed adam's eye not that more glorious when the angels met jacob in mahanaim where he saw the field pavilioned with his guardians bright nor that which on the flaming mount appeared in dothan covered with a camp of fire against the syrian king who to surprise one man assassin-like had levied war war unproclaimed the princely hierarch in the bright stand there left his powers to seize possession of the garden he alone to find where adam sheltered took his way not unperceived of adam who to eve while the great visitant approached thus spake eve now expect great tidings which perhaps of us will soon determine or impose new laws to be observed for i descry from yonder blazing cloud that veils the hill one of the heavenly host and by his gate none of the meanest some great potentate o'er the thrones above such majesty invests him coming yet not terrible that i should fear nor sociably mild as raphael that i should much confide but solemn and sublime whom not to offend with reverence i must meet and thou retire he ended and the archangel soon drew nigh not in his shape celestial but as man clad to meet man over his lucid arms a military vest of purple flowed livelier than melibean or the grain of sara worn by kings and heroes old in time of truce iris had dipped the wolf his starry helm unbuckled showed him prime in manhood where youth ended by his side as in a glistering zodiac hung the sword satan's dire dread and in his hand the spear adam bowed low he kingly from his state inclined not but his coming thus declared adam heaven's high behest no preface needs sufficient that thy prayers are heard and death then due by sentence when thou didst transgress defeated of his seizure many days given thee of grace wherein thou mayst repent and one bad act with many deeds well done mayst cover well may then thy lord appeased 
redeem thee quite from death's rapacious claims but longer in this paradise to dwell permits not to remove thee i am come and send thee from the garden forth to till the ground whence thou wast taken fitter soil he added not for adam at the news heart struck with chilling gripe of sorrow stood that all his senses bound eve who unseen yet all had heard with audible lament discovered soon the place of her retire oh unexpected stroke worse than of death must i thus leave thee paradise thus leave thee native soil these happy walks and shades fit haunt of gods where i had hoped to spend quiet though sad the respite of that day that must be mortal to us both o oh, flowers that never will in other climate grow my early visitation and my last at even which i bred up with tender hand from the first opening bud and gave ye names who now shall rear ye to the sun or rank your tribes and water from the ambrosial fount thee lastly nuptial bower by me adorned with what to sight or smell was sweet from thee how shall i part and whither wander down into a lower world to this obscure and wild how shall we breathe in other air less pure accustomed to immortal fruits whom thus the angel interrupted mild lament not eve but patiently resign what justly thou hast lost nor set thy heart thus over fond on that which is not thine thy going is not lonely with thee goes thy husband him to follow thou art bound where he abides think there thy native soil adam by this from the cold sudden damp recovering and his scattered spirits returned to michael thus his humble words addressed celestial whether among the thrones or named of them the highest or such of shape may seem prince above princes gently hast thou told thy message which might else in telling wound and in performing end us what besides of sorrow and dejection and despair our frailty can sustain thy tidings bring departure from this happy place our sweet recess and only consolation left familiar to our eyes all places else inhospitable appear and desolate nor knowing us nor known and if by prayer incessant i could hope to change the will of him who all things can i would not cease to weary him with my assiduous cries but prayer against his absolute decree no more avails than breath against the wind blown stifling back on him that breathes it forth therefore to his great bidding i submit this most afflicts me that departing hence as from his face i shall be hid deprived his blessed countenance here i could frequent with worship place by place where he vouchsafed presence divine and to my sons relate on this mount he appeared under this tree stood visible among these pines his voice i heard here with him at this fountain talk so many grateful altars i would rear of grassy turf and pile up every stone of lustre from the brook in memory or monument to ages and thereon offer sweet-smelling gums and fruits and flowers in yonder nether world where shall i seek his bright appearances or footstep trace for though i fled him angry yet recalled to life prolonged and promised race I now gladly behold though but his utmost skirts of glory and far off his steps adore to whom thus michael with regard benign adam thou knowest heaven his and all the earth not this rock only his omnipresence fills land sea and air and every kind that lives fomented by his virtual power and warmed all the earth he gave thee to possess and rule no despicable gift surmise not then his presence to these narrow bounds confined of paradise or eden this had been perhaps thy capital seat from whence had spread all generations and had hither come from all the ends of the earth to celebrate and reverence thee 
their great progenitor. But this preeminence thou hast lost, brought down to dwell on even ground now with thy sons. Yet doubt not, but in valley and in plain God is, as here, and will be found alike present, and of his presence many a sign still following thee, still compassing thee round with goodness and paternal love, his face express, and of his steps the track divine, which that thou mayst believe and be confirmed, ere thou from hence depart, know I am sent to show thee what shall come in future days to thee and to thy offspring. Good with bad expect to hear, supernal grace contending with sinfulness of men, thereby to learn true patience, and to temper joy with fear and pious sorrow, equally inured by moderation either state to bear, prosperous or adverse. So shalt thou lead safest thy life, and best prepared endure thy mortal passage when it comes. Ascend this hill. Let Eve, for I have drenched her eyes, hear sleep below while thou to foresight wakest, as once thou slept, while she to life was formed. To whom thus Adam gratefully replied, Ascend, I follow thee, safe guide, the path thou leadst me, and to the hand of heaven submit, however chastening. To the evil turn my obvious breast, arming to overcome by suffering, and earn rest from labour won, if so I may attain. So both ascend in the visions of God. It was a hill of paradise the highest, from whose top the hemisphere of earth in clearest ken stretched out to amplest reach of prospect lay. Not higher that hill, nor wider looking round, whereon, for different cause, the tempter set our second Adam in the wilderness, to show him all earth's kingdoms and the glory. His eye might there command wherever stood city of old or modern fame, the seat of mightiest empire, from the destined walls of Cambalu, seat of Cathayan Can, and Samarkand by Oxus, Timir's throne, to Paquin of Sinean kings, and thence to Agra and Lahore of great Mogul, down to the golden Chersonese, or where the Persian and at Batan sate, or since in Hispahan, or where the Russian Tsar in Moscow, or the Sultan in Byzance, Turkestan born. Nor could his eye not ken the empire of Negus to his utmost porter Coco, and the less maritime kings, Mombaza and Quiloa and Melind, and Sofala thought Ophir, to the realm of Congo, and Angola farthest south, or thence from Niger flood to Atlas Mount, the kingdoms of Almansor, Fez and Sus, Morocco and Algiers and Tremison. On Europe thence, and where Rome was to sway the world, in spirit perhaps he also saw rich Mexico, the seat of Montezuma and Cusco in Peru, the richer seat of Atabalapa, and yet unspoiled Guiana, whose great city Garion's sons call El Dorado. But to nobler sights Michael from Adam's eyes the film removed, which that false fruit that promised clearer sight had bred. Then purged with euphrasy and rue the visual nerve, for he had much to see. And from the well of life three drops instilled, so deep the power of these ingredients pierced, even to the inmost seat of mental sight, that Adam, now enforced to close his eyes, sunk down, and all his spirits became entranced. But him the gentle angel by the hand soon raised, and his attention thus recalled. Adam, now ope thine eyes, and first behold the effects which thy original crime hath wrought in some to spring from thee, who never touched the accepted tree, nor with the snake conspired, nor sinned thy sin, yet from that sin derived corruption to bring forth more violent deeds. His eyes he opened, and beheld a field, part arable and tilth, whereon were sheaves new reaped the other part sheep walks and folds it midst an altar as the landmark stood rustic of grassy sword 
thither anon a sweaty reaper from his tillage brought first fruits the green ear and the yellow sheep unculled as came to hand a shepherd next more meek came with the first things of his flock choicest and best then sacrificing laid the innards and their fat with incense strewed on the cleft wood and all due rites performed his offering soon propitious fire from heaven consumed with nimble glance and grateful steam the others not for his was not sincere whereat he inly raged and as they talked smote him into the midriff with a stone that beat out life he fell and deadly pale groaned out his soul with gushing blood effused much at that sight was adam in his heart dismayed and thus in haste to the angel cried o oh, teacher some great mischief had befallen to that meek man who well had sacrificed his piety thus and pure devotion paid to whom michael thus he also moved replied these two are brethren adam and to come out of thy loins the unjust the just hath slain for envy that his brother's offering found from heaven acceptance but the bloody fact will be avenged and the other's faith approved to lose no reward though here thou see him die rolling in dust and gore to which our sire alas both for the deed and for the cause but have i now seen death is this the way i must return to native dust o oh, sight of terror foul and ugly to behold horrid to think how horrible to feel to whom thus michael death thou hast seen in his first shape on man but many shapes of death and many are the ways that lead to his grim cave all dismal yet to sense more terrible at the entrance than within some as thou sawst by violent stroke shall die by fire flood famine by intemperance more in meats and drinks which on the earth shall bring diseases dire of which a monstrous crew before thee shall appear that thou mayst know what misery the abstinence of eve shall bring on men immediately a place before his eyes appeared sad noisome dark a lazar house it seemed wherein were laid numbers of all diseased all maladies of ghastly spasm or racking torture qualms of heart-sick agony all feverous kinds convulsions epilepsies fierce catars intestine stone and ulcer colic pangs dropsies and asthmas and joint racking rheums dire was the tossing deep the groans despair tended the sick busiest from couch to couch and over them triumphant death his dart shook but delayed to strike though oft invoked with vows as their chief good and final hope sight so deform what heart of rock could long dry eyes behold adam could not but wept though not of woman born compassion quelled his best of man and gave him up to tears a space till firmer thoughts restrained excess and scarce recovering words his plaint renewed o oh, miserable mankind to what fall degraded to what wretched state reserved better end here unborn why is life given to be thus wrested from us rather why obtruded on us thus who if we knew what we receive would either not accept life offered or soon beg to lay it down glad to be so dismissed in peace can thus the image of god in man created once so goodly and erect though faulty since to such unsightly sufferings be debased under inhuman pains why should not man retaining still divine similitude in part from such deformities be free and for his maker's image sake exempt their maker's image answered michael then forsook them when themselves they vilified to serve ungoverned appetite and took his image whom they served 
a brutish vice, inductive mainly to the sin of Eve. Therefore so abject is their punishment, disfiguring not God's likeness, but their own, or if his likeness by themselves defaced, while they pervert pure nature's healthful rules to loathsome sickness, worthily, since they God's image did not reverence in themselves. I yield it just, said Adam, and submit. But is there yet no other way besides these painful passages how we may come to death and mix with our connatural dust? There is, said Michael, if thou well observe the rule of not too much, by temperance taught, in what thou eatst and drinkst, seeking from thence due nourishment, not gluttonous delight, till many years over thy head return. So mayst thou live till like ripe fruit thou drop into thy mother's lap, or be with ease gathered, not harshly plucked, for death mature. This is old age. But then thou must outlive thy youth, thy strength, thy beauty, which will change to withered, weak, and grey, thy senses then obtuse, all taste of pleasure must forgo to what thou hast, and for the air of youth, hopeful and cheerful, in thy blood will reign a melancholy damp of cold and dry to weigh thy spirits down, and last consume the balm of life. To whom our ancestor, henceforth I fly not death, nor would prolong life much, bent rather how I may be quit, fairest and easiest, of this cumbrous charge, which I must keep till my appointed day of rendering up. Michael to him replied, Nor love thy life nor hate, but what thou livest, live well. How long or short, permit to heaven. And now prepare thee for another sight. He looked, and saw a spacious plain, whereon were tents of various hue. By some were herds of cattle grazing, others whence the sound of instruments that made melodious chime was heard of harp and organ. And who moved the stops and cords was seen, his volant touch instinct through all proportions, low and high, fled and pursued transverse the resonant fugue. In other part, stood one who at the forge laboring two massy clods of iron and brass had melted whether found where casual fire had wasted woods on mountain or in vale down to the veins of earth thence gliding hot to some cave's mouth or whether washed by stream from underground the liquid ore he drained into fit moulds prepared from which he formed first his own tools then what might else be wrought, fusel or graven in metal. After these, but on the heather side, a different sort from the high neighbouring hills, which was the seat, down to the plain descended. By the guise just men they seemed, and all their study bent to worship God aright, and know his works not hid, nor those things lost which might preserve freedom and peace to men. They on the plain long had not walked, when from the tents, Behold, a bevy of fair women, richly gay in gems and wanton dress. To the harp they sung soft amorous ditties, and in dance came on. The men, though grave, eyed them, and let their eyes rove without rain, till in the amorous net fast caught they liked, and each his liking chose. And now of love they treat, till the evening star love's harbinger appeared then all in heat they light the nuptial torch and bid invoke hymen then first to marriage rites invoked with feast and music all the tents resound such happy interview and fair event of love and youth not lost songs garlands flowers and charming symphonies attached the heart of adam soon inclined to admit delight the bent of nature which he thus expressed true opener of mine eyes prime angel blessed much better seems this vision and more hope of peaceful days portends than those two past 
those were of hate and death or pain much worse here nature seems fulfilled in all her ends to whom thus michael judge not what is best by pleasure though to nature seeming meet created as thou art to nobler end holy and pure conformity divine those tents thou sawst so pleasant were the tents of wickedness wherein shall dwell his race who slew his brother studious they appear of arts that polish life inventors rare unmindful of their maker though his spirit taught them but they his gifts acknowledged none yet they a beauteous offspring shall beget for that fair female troop thou sawst that seemed of goddesses so blithe so smooth so gay yet empty of all good wherein consists woman's domestic honour and chief praise bred only and completed to the taste of lustful appetence to sing to dance to dress and troll the tongue and roll the eye to these that sober race of men whose lives religious titled them the sons of god shall yield up all their virtue all their fame ignobly to the trains and to the smiles of these fair atheists and now swim in joy ere long to swim at large and laugh for which the world ere long a world of tears must weep to whom thus adam a short joy bereft o oh, pity and shame that they who to live well entered so fair should turn aside to tread paths indirect or in the midway faint but still i see the tenor of man's woe holds on the same from woman to begin from man's effeminate slackness it begins said the angel who should better hold his place by wisdom and superior gifts received but now prepare thee for another scene he looked and saw wide territory spread before him towns and rural works between cities of men with lofty gates and towers concourse in arms fierce faces threatening war giants of mighty bone and bold emprise part wield their arms part curb the foaming steed single or in array of battle ranged both horse and foot nor idly mustering stood one way a band select from forage drives a herd of beeves fair oxen and fair kind from a fat meadow ground or fleecy flock ewes and their bleating lambs over the plain their booty scarce with life the shepherds fly but call in aid which tax a bloody fray with cruel tournament the squadrons join where cattle pastured late now scattered lies with carcasses and arms than sanguine field deserted others to a city strongly siege and camp by battery scale and mine assaulting others from the wall defend with dart and javelin stones and sulphurous fire on each hand slaughter and gigantic deeds in other part the sceptred heralds call to council in the city gates anon grey-headed men and grave with warriors mixed assemble and harangues are heard but soon in factious opposition till at last of middle age one rising eminent in wise deport spake much of right and wrong of justice of religion truth and peace and judgment from above him old and young exploded and had seized with violent hands had not a cloud descending snatched him thence unseen amid the throng so violence proceeded and oppression and sword law through all the plain and refuge none was found adam was all in tears and to his guide lamenting turned full sad oh what are these death's ministers not men who thus deal death inhumanly to men and multiply ten thousand fold the sin of him who slew his brother for of whom such massacre make they but of their brethren men of men but who was that just man whom had not heaven rescued had in his righteousness been lost to whom thus michael these are the product of those ill-mated marriages thou sawst where good with bad were matched who of themselves abhor to join and by imprudence mixed produce 
prodigious births of body or mind such were these giants men of high renown for in those days might only shall be admired and valour and heroic virtue called to overcome in battle and subdue nations and bring home spoils with infinite manslaughter shall be held the highest pitch of human glory and for glory done of triumph to be styled great conquerors patrons of mankind gods and sons of gods destroyers rightlier called and plagues of men thus fame shall be achieved renown on earth and what most merits fame in silence hid but he the seventh from thee whom thou beheldst the only righteous in a world perverse and therefore hated therefore so beset with foes for daring single to be just and utter odious truth that god would come to judge them with his saints him the most high wrapped in a balmy cloud with winged steeds did as thou sawst receive to walk with god high in salvation and the climes of bliss exempt from death to show thee what reward awaits the good the rest what punishment which now direct thine eyes and soon behold he looked and saw the face of things quite change the brazen throat of war had ceased to roar all now was turned to jollity and game to luxury and riot feast and dance marrying or prostituting as befell rape or adultery where passing fair allured them thence from cups to civil broils at length a reverend sire among them came and of their doings great dislike declared and testified against their ways he oft frequented their assemblies where so met triumphs or festivals and to them preached conversion and repentance as to souls in prison under judgments imminent but all in vain which when he saw he ceased contending and removed his tents far off then from the mountain hewing timber tall began to build a vessel of huge bulk measured by cubit length and breadth and height smeared round with pitch and in the side a door contrived and of provisions laid in large for man and beast when lo a wonder strange of every beast and bird and insect small came sevens and pairs and entered in as taught their order last the sire and his three sons with their four wives and god made fast the door meanwhile the south wind rose and with black wings wide hovering all the clouds together drove from under heaven the hills to their supply vapour and exhalation dusk and moist sent up amain and now the thickened sky like a dark ceiling stood down rushed the rain impetuous and continued till the earth no more was seen the floating vessel swam uplifted and secure with beaked prow rode tilting o'er the waves all dwellings else flood overwhelmed and them with all their pomp deep under water rolled sea covered sea sea without shore and in their palaces where luxury late reigned sea monsters whelped and stapled of mankind so numerous late all left in one small bottom swum embarked how didst thou grieve then adam to behold the end of all thy offspring end so sad depopulation thee another flood of tears and sorrow a flood thee also drowned and sunk thee as thy sons till gently reared by the angel on thy feet thou stoodst at last though comfortless as when a father mourns his children all in view destroyed at once and scarce to the angel uttered thus thy plaint o oh, visions ill foreseen better had i lived ignorant of future so had borne my part of evil only each day's lot enough to bear those now that were dispensed the burden of many ages on me light at once by my foreknowledge gaining birth abortive to torment me ere their being with thought that they must be let no man seek henceforth to be foretold what shall befall him or his children evil he may be sure 
which neither his foreknowing can prevent and he the future evil shall no less in apprehension than in substance feel grievous to bear but that care now is past man is not whom to warn those few escaped famine and anguish would at last consume wandering that watery desert i had hoped when violence was ceased and war on earth all would have then gone well peace would have crowned with length of happy days the race of man but i was far deceived for now i see peace to corrupt no less than war to waste how comes it thus unfold celestial guide and whether here the race of man will end to whom thus michael those whom last thou sawst in triumph and luxurious wealth are they first seen in acts of prowess eminent and great exploits but of true virtue void who having spilt much blood and done much waste subduing nations and achieved thereby fame in the world high titles and rich prey shall change their course to pleasure ease and sloth surfeit and lust till wantonness and pride raise out of friendship hostile deeds in peace the conquered also and enslaved by war shall with their freedom lost all virtue lose and fear of god from whom their piety feigned in sharp contest of battle found no aid against invaders therefore cool in zeal thenceforth shall practise how to live secure worldly or to salute on what their lords shall leave them to enjoy for thirth shall bear more than enough that temperance may be tried so all shall turn degenerate all depraved justice and temperance truth and faith forgot one man except the only son of light in a dark age against example good against allurement custom and a world offended fearless of reproach and scorn or violence he of their wicked ways shall them admonish and before them set the paths of righteousness how much more safe and full of peace denouncing wrath to come on their impenitence and shall return of them derided but of god observed the one just man alive by his command shall build a wondrous ark as thou beheldst to save himself and household from amidst a world devote to universal rack no sooner he with them of man and beast select for life shall in the ark be lodged and sheltered round that all the cataracts of heaven set open on the earth shall pour rain day and night all fountains of the deep broke up shall heave the ocean to usurp beyond all bounds till inundation rise above the highest hills then shall this mount of paradise by might of waves be moved out of his place pushed by the horned flood with all his verdure spoiled and trees adrift down the great river to the opening gulf and there take root an island salt and bare the haunt of seals and orcs and sea mews clang to teach thee that god attributes to place no sanctity if none be thither brought by men who there frequent or therein dwell and now what further shall ensue behold he looked and saw the ark hull on the flood which now abated for the clouds were fled driven by a keen north wind that blowing dry wrinkled the face of deluge just decayed and the clear sun on his wide watery glass gazed hot and of the fresh wave largely drew as after thirst which made their flowing shrink from standing lake to dripping air that stole with soft foot towards the deep who now had stopped his sluices as the heaven his window shut the ark no more now floats but seems on ground fast on the top of some high mountain fixed and now the tops of hills as rocks appear with clamour thence the rapid currents drive towards the retreating sea their furious tide forthwith from out the ark a raven flies and after him the surer messenger a dove sent forth once and again 
to spy green tree or ground whereon his foot may light the second time returning in his bill an olive leaf he brings pacific sign anon dry ground appears and from his ark the ancient sire descends with all his train then with uplifted hands and eyes devout grateful to heaven over his head beholds a dewy cloud and in the cloud a bow conspicuous with three lifted colours gay betokening peace from god and covenant new whereat the heart of adam erst so sad greatly rejoiced and thus his joy broke forth o oh, thou that future things canst represent as present heavenly instructor i revive at this last sight assured that man shall live with all the creatures and their seed preserve far less i now lament for one whole world of wicked sons destroyed than i rejoice for one man found so perfect and so just that god vouchsafes to raise another world from him and all his anger to forget but say what mean those coloured streaks in heaven distended as the brow of god appeased or serve they as a flowery verge to bind the fluid skirts of that same watery cloud lest it dissolve and shower the earth to whom the archangel dexterously thou aimst so willingly doth god remit his ire though late repenting him of man depraved grieved at his heart when looking down he saw the whole earth filled with violence and all flesh corrupting each their way yet those removed such grace shall one just man find in his sight that he relents not to blot out mankind and makes a covenant never to destroy the earth again by flood nor let the sea surpass his bounds nor rain to drown the world with man therein or beast but when he brings over the earth a cloud will therein set his triple coloured bow whereon to look and call to mind his covenant day and night seed time and harvest heat and hoary frost shall hold their course till fire purge all things new both heaven and earth wherein the just shall dwell notes line four eighty four after this line sixteen seventy four adds demoniac frenzy moping melancholy and moonstruck madness pining atrophy marasmus and wide wasting pestilence line five forty eight of rendering up and patiently attend my dissolution michael replied sixteen seventy four line six forty seven tax makes sixteen seventy four line eight sixty six that who sixteen seventy four the end of the eleventh book recording by thomas copeland book twelve of paradise lost second edition by john milton this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by thomas copeland book twelve the argument the angel michael continues from the flood to relate what shall succeed then in the mention of abraham comes by degrees to explain who that seed of the woman shall be which was promised adam and eve in the fall his incarnation death resurrection and ascension the state of the church till his second coming adam greatly satisfied and recomforted by these relations and promises descends the hill with michael wakens eve who all this while had slept but with gentle dreams composed to quietness of mind than submission michael in either hand leads them out of paradise the fiery sword waving behind them and the cherubim taking their stations to guard the place as one who in his journey baits at noon though bent on speed so here the archangel paused betwixt the world destroyed and world restored if adam aught perhaps might interpose then with transition sweet new speech resumes thus thou hast seen one world begin and end and man as from a second stock proceed much thou hast yet to see 
but I perceive thy mortal sight to fail. Objects divine must needs impair and weary human sense. Henceforth what is to come I will relate. Thou therefore give due audience and attend. This second source of men, while yet but few, and while the dread of judgment past remains fresh in their minds, fearing the deity with some regard to what is just and right shall lead their lives, and multiply apace, labouring the soil and reaping plenteous crop, corn, wine, and oil, and from the herd or flock oft sacrificing bullock, lamb, or kid with large wine offerings poured, and sacred feast, shall spend their days in joy unblamed, and dwell long time in peace, by families and tribes under paternal rule, till one shall rise a proud, ambitious heart, who, not content with fair equality, fraternal state, will arrogate dominion undeserved over his brethren, and quite dispossess concord and law of nature from the earth. Hunting and men, not beasts, shall be his game, with war and hostile snare, such as refuse subjection to his empire tyrannous. A mighty hunter, thence he shall be styled, before the Lord, as in despite of heaven, or from heaven claiming second sovereignty, and from rebellion shall derive his name, though of rebellion others he accuse. He, with a crew whom like ambition joins with him, or under him to tyrannize, marching from Eden towards the west, shall find the plain, wherein a black bituminous gurge boils out from underground, the mouth of hell. Of brick, and of that stuff, they cast to build a city and tower, whose top may reach to heaven, and get themselves a name, lest, far dispersed in foreign lands, the memory be lost, regardless whether good or evil fame. But God, who oft descends to visit men unseen, and through their habitations walks to mark their doings, them beholding soon, comes down to see their city, ere the tower obstruct heaven towers, and in derision sets upon their tongues a various spirit to raise quite out their native language, and instead to sow a jangling noise of words unknown. Forthwith a hideous gabble rises loud among the builders, each to other calls not understood till hoarse, and all in rage as mocked they storm. Great laughter was in heaven, and looking down, to see the hubbub strange and hear the din. Thus was the building left ridiculous, and the work confusion named. Whereto thus Adam fatherly displeased, O oh, execrable son, so to aspire above his brethren, to himself affirming authority usurped, from God not given. He gave us only over beast, fish, fowl dominion absolute, that right we hold by his donation. But man over men he made not lord, such title to himself reserving, human left from human free. But this usurper, his encroachment proud, stays not on man. To God his tower intends siege and defiance. Wretched man! What food will he convey up thither to sustain himself and his rash army, where thin air above the clouds will pine his entrails gross, and famish him of breath, if not of bread? To whom thus Michael? Justly thou abhorst that son, who on the quiet state of men such trouble brought, affecting to subdue rational liberty. Yet know withal, since thy original lapse, True liberty is lost, which always with right reason dwells twinned, and from her hath no individual being. Reason in man obscured or not obeyed, immediately inordinate desires and upstart passions catch the government from reason, and to servitude reduce man till then free. Therefore, since he permits within himself unworthy powers to reign over free reason, God, in judgment just, subjects him from without to violent lords, who oft as undeservedly enthrall his outward freedom. Tyranny must be, though to the tyrant thereby no excuse. Yet sometimes nations will decline so low from virtue, which is reason, that no wrong but justice, and some fatal curse annexed, deprives them of their outward liberty, their inward loss. 
witness the reverent son of him who built the ark who for the shame done to his father heard this heavy curse servant of servants on his vicious race thus will this latter as the former world still tend from bad to worse till god at last wearied with their iniquities withdraw his presence from among them and avert his holy eyes resolving from thenceforth to leave them to their own polluted ways and one peculiar nation to select from all the rest of whom to be invoked a nation from one faithful man to spring him on this side euphrates yet residing bred up in idol worship oh that men canst thou believe should be so stupid grown while yet the patriarch lived to scape the flood as to forsake the living god and fall to worship their own work in wood and stone for gods yet him god the most high vouchsafes to call by vision from his father's house his kindred and false gods into a land which he will show him and from him will raise a mighty nation and upon him shower his benediction so that in his seed all nations shall be blessed he straight obeys not knowing to what land yet firm believes i see him but thou canst not with what faith he leaves his gods his friends and native soil ur of chaldea passing now the ford to haran after him a cumbrous train of herds and flocks and numerous servitude not wandering poor but trusting all his wealth with god who called him in the land unknown canaan he now attains i see his tents pitched about shechem and the neighboring plain of moreb there by promise he receives gift to his progeny of all that land from hamath northward to the desert south things by their names i call though yet unnamed from hermon east to the great western sea mount hermon yonder sea each place behold in prospect as i point them on the shore mount carmel here the double fountained stream jordan true limit eastward but his son shall dwell to senir that long ridge of hills this ponder that all nations of the earth shall in his seed be blessed by that seed is meant thy great deliverer who shall bruise the serpent's head whereof to thee anon plainlier shall be revealed this patriarch blessed whom faithful abraham due time shall call a son and of his son a grandchild leaves like him in faith in wisdom and renown the grandchild with twelve sons increased departs from canaan to a land hereafter called egypt divided by the river nile see where it flows disgorging at seven mouths into the sea to sojourn in that land he comes invited by a younger son in time of dearth a son whose worthy deeds raise him to be the second in that realm of pharaoh there he dies and leaves his race growing into a nation and now grown suspected to a sequent king who seeks to stop their overgrowth as inmate guests too numerous whence of guests he makes them slaves inhospitably and kills their infant males till by two brethren those two brethren called moses and aaron sent from god to claim his people from enthrallment they return with glory and spoil back to their promised land but first the lawless tyrant who denies to know their god or message to regard must be compelled by signs and judgments dire to blood unshed the rivers must be turned frogs lice and flies must all his palace fill with loads intrusion and fill all the land his cattle must of rot and murrain die botches and blains must all his flesh emboss and all his people thunder mixed with hail hail mixed with fire must rend the egyptian sky and wheel on the earth devouring where it rolls but it devours not herb or fruit or grain a darksome cloud of locusts swarming down must eat and on the ground leave nothing green darkness must overshadow all his bounds palpable darkness and blot out three days last with one midnight stroke all the first-born of egypt must lie dead thus 
with ten wounds this river dragon tamed at length submits to let his sojourners depart and oft humbles his stubborn heart that still as ice more hardened after thaw till in his rage pursuing whom he late dismissed the sea swallows him with his host but them lets pass as on dry land between two crystal walls awed by the rod of moses so to stand divided till his rescued gain their shore such wondrous power god to his saint will lend though present in his angel who shall go before them in a cloud and pillar of fire to guide them in their journey and remove behind them while the jurid king pursues all night he will pursue but his approach darkness defends between till morning watch then through the fiery pillar and the cloud god looking forth will trouble all his host and craze their chariot wheels when by command moses once more his potent rod extends over the sea the sea his rod obeys on their embattled ranks the waves return and overwhelm their war the race elect safe towards canaan from the shore advance through the wild desert not the readiest way lest entering on the canaanite alarmed war terrify them inexpert and fear return them back to egypt choosing rather inglorious life with servitude for life to noble and ignoble is more sweet untrained in arms where rashness leads not on this also shall they gain by their delay in the wide wilderness there they shall found their government and the great senate choose through the twelve tribes to rule by laws ordained god from the mount of sinai whose great top shall tremble he descending will himself in thunder lightning and loud trumpet sound ordain them laws part such as appertain to civil justice part religious rites of sacrifice informing them by types and shadows of that destined seed to bruise the serpent by what means he shall achieve mankind's deliverance but the voice of god to mortal ear is dreadful they beseech that moses might report to them his will and terror cease he grants them their desire instructed that to god is no excess without mediator whose high office now moses in figure bears to introduce one greater of whose day he shall foretell and all the prophets in their age the times of great messiah shall sing thus laws and rites established such delight hath god in men obedient to his will that he vouchsafes among them to set up his tabernacle the holy one with mortal men to dwell by his prescript the sanctuary is framed of cedar overlaid with gold therein an ark and in the ark his testimony the records of his covenant over these a mercy seat of gold between the wings of two bright cherubim before him burned seven lamps as in a zodiac representing the heavenly fires over the tent a cloud shall rest by day a fiery gleam by night save when they journey and at length they come conducted by his angel to the land promised to abraham and his seed the rest were long to tell how many battles fought how many kings destroyed and kingdoms won or how the sun shall in mid-heaven stand still a day entire and night's due course adjourn man's voice commanding sun in gibeon stand and thou moon in the vale of ayalon till israel overcome so called the third from abraham son of isaac and from him his whole descent who thus shall canaan win here adam interposed o sent from heaven enlightener of my darkness gracious things thou hast revealed those chiefly which concern just abraham and his seed now first i find mine eyes true opening and my heart much eased erewhile perplexed with thoughts what would become of me and all mankind but now i see his day in whom all nations shall be blessed favour unmerited by me who sought forbidden knowledge by forbidden means this yet i apprehend not why to those among whom god will deign to dwell on earth 
so many and so various laws are given so many laws argue so many sins among them how can god with such reside to whom thus michael doubt not but that sin will reign among them as of thee begot and therefore was law given to them to evince the natural pravity by stirring up sin against law to fight that when they see law can discover sin but not remove save by those shadowy expiations weak the blood of bulls and goats they may conclude some blood more precious must be paid for man just for unjust that in such righteousness to them by faith imputed they may find justification towards god and peace of conscience which the law by ceremonies cannot appease nor man the moral part perform and not performing cannot live so law appears imperfect and but given with purpose to resign them in full time up to a better covenant discipline from shadowy types to truth from flesh to spirit from imposition of strict laws to free acceptance of large grace from servile fear to filial works of law to works of faith and therefore shall not moses though of god highly beloved being but the minister of law his people into canaan lead but joshua when the gentiles jesus call his name and office bearing who shall quell the adversary serpent and bring back through the world's wilderness long wandered man safe to eternal paradise of rest meanwhile they in their earthly canaan placed long time shall dwell and prosper but when sins national interrupt their public peace provoking god to raise them enemies from whom as oft he saves them penitent by judges first then under kings of whom the second both for piety renowned and puissant deeds a promise shall receive irrevocable that his regal throne for ever shall endure the like shall sing all prophecy that of the royal stock of david so i name this king shall rise a son the woman seed to thee foretold foretold to abraham as in whom shall trust all nations and to kings foretold of kings the last for of his reign shall be no end but first a long succession must ensue and his next son for wealth and wisdom famed the clouded ark of god till then in tents wandering shall in a glorious temple enshrine such follow him as shall be registered part good part bad of bad the longer scroll whose foul idolatries and other faults heaped to the popular sum will so incense god as to leave them and expose their land their city his temple and his holy ark with all his sacred things a scorn and prey to that proud city whose high walls thou sawst left in confusion babylon thence called there in captivity he lets them dwell the space of seventy years then brings them back remembering mercy and his covenant sworn to david established as the days of heaven return from babylon by leave of kings the lords whom god disposed the house of god they first re-edify and for a while in mean estate live moderate till grown in wealth and multitude factious they grow but first among the priests dissension springs men who attend the altar and should most endeavour peace their strife pollution brings upon the temple itself at last they seize the sceptre and regard not david's sons then lose it to a stranger that the true anointed king messiah might be born barred of his right yet at his birth a star unseen before in heaven proclaims him come and guides the eastern sages who inquire his place to offer incense myrrh and gold his place of birth a solemn angel tells to simple shepherds keeping watch by night they gladly thither haste and by a choir of squadron angels hear his carol sung a virgin is his mother 
but his sire, the power of the Most High. He shall ascend the throne hereditary, and bound his reign with earth's wide bounds, his glory with the heavens. He ceased, discerning Adam with such joy surcharged as had like grief been dewed in tears without the vent of words, which these he breathed. O oh, prophet of glad tidings, finisher of utmost hope! Now clear I understand what oft my steadiest thoughts have searched in vain, why our great expectation should be called the seed of woman. Virgin mother, hail, high in the love of heaven, yet from my loins thou shalt proceed, and from thy womb the Son of God most high. So God with man unites, Needs must the serpent now his capital bruise expect with mortal pain. Say, where and when their fight, what stroke shall bruise the victor's heel? To whom thus Michael? Dream not of their fight as of a duel, or the local wounds of head or heel. Not therefore joins the sun manhood to Godhead, with more strength to foil their enemy nor so is overcome satan whose fall from heaven a deadlier bruise disabled not to give thee thy death's wound which he who comes thy saviour shall recure not by destroying satan but his works in thee and in thy seed nor can this be but by fulfilling that which thou didst want obedience to the law of god imposed on penalty of death and suffering death the penalty to thy transgression due, and due to theirs which out of thine will grow, so only can high justice rest apaid. The law of God exact he shall fulfill both by obedience and by love, though love alone fulfill the law. Thy punishment he shall endure by coming in the flesh to a reproachful life and cursed death proclaiming life to all who shall believe in his redemption, and that his obedience imputed becomes theirs by faith, his merits to save them, not their own, though legal works. For this he shall live hated, be blasphemed, seized on by force, judged, and to death condemned, a shameful and accursed, nailed to the cross by his own nation, slain for bringing life but to the cross he nails thy enemies the law that is against thee and the sins of all mankind with him there crucified never to hurt them more who rightly trust in this his satisfaction so he dies but soon revives death over him no power shall long usurp Ere the third dawning light return, the stars of morn shall see him rise out of his grave, fresh as the dawning light, thy ransom paid, which man from death redeems, his death for man, as many as offered life neglect not, and the benefit embraced by faith not void of works. This godlike act annuls thy doom, the death thou shouldst have died, in sin forever lost from life, this act shall bruise the head of Satan, crush his strength, defeating sin and death his two main arms, and fix far deeper in his head their stings than temporal death shall bruise the victor's heel, or theirs whom he redeems, a death like sleep, a gentle wafting to immortal life. Nor after resurrection shall he stay longer on earth than certain times to appear to his disciples men who in his life still followed him. To them shall leave in charge to teach all nations what of him they learned and his salvation. Them who shall believe, baptizing in the profluent stream, the sign of washing them from guilt of sin to life pure, and in mind prepared, if so befall, for death like that which the Redeemer died. All nations they shall teach. For from that day not only to the sons of Abraham's loins salvation shall be preached, but to the sons of Abraham's faith, wherever through the world. So 
in his seed all nations shall be blessed then to the heaven of heavens he shall ascend with victory triumphing through the air over his foes and thine there shall surprise the serpent prince of air and drag in chains through all his realm and there confounded leave then enter into glory and resume his seat at god's right hand exalted high above all names in heaven and thence shall come when this world's dissolution shall be ripe with glory and power to judge both quick and dead to judge the unfaithful dead but to reward his faithful and receive them into bliss whether in heaven or earth for then the earth shall all be paradise far happier place than this of eden and far happier days so spake the archangel michael then paused as at the world's great period and our sire replete with joy and wonder thus replied o oh, goodness infinite goodness immense that all this good of evil shall produce and evil turn to good more wonderful than that which by creation first brought forth light out of darkness full of doubt i stand whether i should repent me now of sin by me done and occasioned or rejoice much more that much more good thereof shall spring to god more glory more good will to men from god and over wrath grace shall abound but say if our deliverer up to heaven must reascend what will betide the few his faithful left among the unfaithful herd the enemies of truth who then shall guide his people who defend will they not deal worse with his followers than with him they dealt be sure they will said the angel but from heaven he to his own a comforter will send the promise of the father who shall dwell his spirit within them and the law of faith working through love upon their hearts shall write to guide them in all truth and also arm with spiritual armor able to resist satan's assaults and quench his fiery darts what man can do against them not afraid though to the death against such cruelties with inward consolations recompensed and oft supported so as shall amaze the proudest persecutors for the spirit poured first on his apostles whom he sends to evangelize the nations then on all baptized shall them with wondrous gifts endue to speak all tongues and do all miracles as did the lord before them thus they win great numbers of each nation to receive with joy the tidings brought from heaven at length the ministry performed and race well run their doctrine and their story written left they die but in their room as they forewarn wolves shall succeed for teachers grievous wolves who all the sacred mysteries of heaven to their own vile advantages shall turn of lucre and ambition and the truth with superstitions and traditions taint left only in those written records pure though not but by the spirit understood then shall they seek to avail themselves of names places and titles and with these to join secular power though feigning still to act by spiritual to themselves appropriating the spirit of god promised alike and given to all believers and from that pretense spiritual laws by carnal power shall force on every conscience laws which none shall find left them enrolled or what the spirit within shall on the heart engrave what will they then but force the spirit of grace itself and bind his consort liberty what but unbuild his living temples built by faith to stand their own faith not another's for on earth who against faith and conscience can be heard infallible yet many will presume whence heavy persecution shall arise on all who in the worship persevere of spirit and truth the rest for a greater part 
will deem in outward rites and specious forms religion satisfied truth shall retire but stuck with slanderous darts and works of faith rarely be found so shall the world go on to good malignant to bad men benign under our own weight groaning till the day appear of respiration to the just and vengeance to the wicked at return of him so lately promised to thy aid the woman seed obscurely then foretold now amplier known thy saviour and thy lord last in the clouds from heaven to be revealed in glory of the father to dissolve satan and his perverted world then raised from the conflagrant mass purged and refined new heavens new earth ages of endless date founded in righteousness and peace and love to bring forth fruits joy and eternal bliss he ended and thus adam last replied how soon hath thy prediction seer blessed measured this transient world the race of time till time stand fixed beyond is all abyss eternity whose end no eye can reach greatly instructed i shall hence depart greatly in peace of thought and have my fill of knowledge what this vessel can contain beyond which was my folly to aspire henceforth i learn that to obey is best and love with fear the only god to walk as in his presence ever to observe his providence and on him soul depend merciful over all his works with good still overcoming evil and by small accomplishing great things by things deemed weak subverting worldly strong and worldly wise by simply meek that suffering for truth's sake is fortitude to highest victory and to the faithful death the gate of life taught this by his example whom i now acknowledge my redeemer ever blessed to whom thus also the angel last replied this having learnt thou hast attained the sum of wisdom hope no higher though all the stars thou knewst by name and all the ethereal powers all secrets of the deep all nature's works or works of god in heaven air earth or sea and all the riches of this world enjoyest and all the rule one empire only add deeds to thy knowledge answerable add faith add virtue patience temperance add love by name to come called charity the soul of all the rest then wilt thou not be loath to leave this paradise but shall possess a paradise within thee happier far let us descend now therefore from this top of speculation for the hour precise exacts our parting hence and see the guards by me encamped on yonder hill expect their motion at whose front a flaming sword in signal of remove waves fiercely round we may no longer stay go waken eve her also i with gentle dreams have calmed portending good and all her spirits composed to meek submission thou at season fit let her with thee partake what thou hast heard chiefly what may concern her faith to know the great deliverance by her seed to come for by the woman's seed on all mankind that ye may live which will be many days both in one faith unanimous though sad with cause for evils past yet much more cheered with meditation on the happy end he ended and they both descend to the hill descended adam to the bower where eve lay sleeping ran before but found her waked and thus with words not sad she him received whence thou returnst and whither wentst i know for god is also in sleep and dreams advise which he hath sent propitious some great good presaging since with sorrow and heart's distress wearied i fell asleep but now lead on 
in me is no delay. With thee to go is to stay here. Without thee here to stay is to go hence unwilling. Thou to me art all things under heaven, all places thou, who for my willful crime art banished hence. This further consolation yet secure I carry hence. Though all by me is lost, such favour I, unworthy, am vouchsafed, by me the promised seeds shall all restore. So spake our mother Eve, and Adam heard well pleased, but answered not. For now too nigh the archangel stood, and from the other hill to their fixed station all in bright array the cherubim descended, on the ground gliding meteorous as evening mist risen from a river or the marish glides, and gathers ground fast at the laborer's heel, homeward returning. I in front advanced the brandished sword of God before them blazed, fierce as a comet, which with torrid heat and vapor as the Libyan air a dust began to parch that temperate clime, whereat in either hand the hastening angel caught our lingering parents, and to the eastern gate led them direct, and down the cliff as fast to the subjected plain, then disappeared. They, looking back, all the eastern side beheld of paradise, so late their happy seat, waved over by that flaming brand, the gate with dreadful faces thronged and fiery arms. Some natural tears they dropped, but wiped them soon. The world was all before them where to choose their place of rest, and providence the guide. They, hand in hand, with wandering steps and slow, through Eden took their solitary way. Notes Argument The Angel Through Seed Thence from the flood relates, and by degrees explains who that seed, 1667. Lines 1 through 5. These five lines were added in the second edition, 1674, when the original tenth book was divided into an eleventh and twelfth. The End of Book 12. Recording by Thomas Copeland. The End of Paradise Lost. Second edition. By John Milton. Book Twelve of Paradise Lost, Second Edition by John Milton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Book Twelve, The Argument. The Angel Michael continues from the flood to relate what shall succeed. Then, in the mention of Abraham, comes by degrees to explain who that seed of the woman shall be which was promised Adam and Eve in the fall. Is incarnation, death, resurrection, and ascension, the state of the church till his second coming. Adam, greatly satisfied and recomforted by these relations and promises, descends the hill with Michael, wakens Eve, who all this while had slept, but with gentle dreams composed to quietness of mind than submission. Michael, in either hand, leads them out of paradise, the fiery sword waving behind them, and the cherubim taking their stations to guard the place. 